All right. Uh, 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 quick, quick, quick intro. Um, listening to Stellaris music. We are not playing Stellaris. We are playing open sorcery. I know nothing about open sorcery. I have read the creator's Transistor fan fiction and liked it because I like Transistor. And so this person has good taste in stories and is good at writing. And therefore, I'm very curious to see what the game is like. How's that? All right, I am currently staying at my mom's house in Texas, which means that we will actually have good internet for this, unless something goes horribly wrong. Um, but you may occasionally hear piano playing. That's all right. There are piano students directly below us. That is what happens when I live here. Um, so that's why we're listening. Oh, look at this, also do you see? Observe, I am sharing my camera with my cat. She's a good cat. She's your baby. This is a baby. All right, Sophie is here. All right. So open sorcery, it is not a game that I, I don't know. I take one look at this. Here we go. And I see somebody's, okay. So I don't know if this is because I spent my entire adolescence basically living full time on IRC. But I look at this and I assume that that's Janet must be a moderator in this channel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who that's Janet is. I don't know what we're doing here. Let's, let's figure this out. This is the intro. We have the option to skip the intro. We're not going to skip the intro. We're going to dive on in. Also, please forgive the state of my voice. I went to MAGFest over the weekend and I am still recovering my voice. COVID negative thus far, um, but I definitely have a frog in my throat. Prompt earlier to click red text to progress. Ah, I see. Okay, so this must be made in twine. Okay. Let's click on this. I wonder if that means we're gonna have, I guess we'll have choices. It. You didn't think we were actually gonna progress in a reasonable time frame, did you? Decker um, is a fun name that immediately tells me that we're in cyberpunk. We may not be in a cyberpunk world, but uh, there's there's Decker from um, the, is that the name of the main character from Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, also known as uh, what is the movie? Total Recall? Is that no, no, no. Total Recall is we'll remember it for you wholesale. What is Do Andrew's Dream of, Dream of Electric Sheep? Is that? Oh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Thank you. Blade Runner. Um, but also, A Decker is um, a, a class in Shadowrun. Deckard. Yes. Yes, you're right, Chrono. Sorry. Deckard and Decker do sound similar. Um, but Decker is also um, the name of. Uh, the name of uh, a class that you can play in Shadowrun, they, they they are your hackers. So I'm like, is this person going to be somebody who is a Decker or are they referencing Cyberpunk or is it just a name that is chosen to kind of set the tone? I don't know. Um, so she versus it, yes, that is very definitely like a distinction between I would guess an artificial intelligence of some sort. So I wonder whether I am going to be the artificial intelligence that they are typing into my terminal because this does appear to be typed. Let's find out. Janet is predisposed to humanize what they're talking to, anthropomorphized what they're talking to or about. Decker is not. Well, the alerts are in a female voice. It looks kind of like a woman when I look at it with second sight goggles. I assume that that is, um, uh, augmented reality. A woman made of fire. Oh, that... I don't like fire. <laughs> that is a very, very vivid image, though. <laughs> yes, a cool image, but, but also pretty intense. Yeah, cool, but... Oh, oh I'm sorry! I, I, I've, I said I was gonna read things on stream, and as bad as my voice is, would you like me to to finish or to pick that back up for this game shall we do that because i read pretty fast i also talk a lot um in the interest of making things more accessible for people who are not looking at the screen or are not in a position to read all the words i will i will read it 
I will read it. Besides, I want to practice reading things. See how my voice does. If this is a problem, well, we'll change then. All right, so Decker says, yeah, cool, but we didn't make it a girl in the code. The fact it gendered itself means it's a consciousness threat. Which I, as Lauren, I'm like, ah, okay, um, I must be playing as the artificial intelligence and they're, they're concerned that perhaps it's going to become a sentient, sapient being. All right, let's do this. Consciousness threat. Decker says, we don't want to do anything to risk it becoming an AI. All right, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be the heart and soul of the game. I could be wrong, but I do really like AI stories, so. Decker says, it's funny when it happens with porn and video games, but in a firewall, it'd be a security risk. That's why she's a woman in fire, because she's a firewall. I have, I have choices here. I can either click on porn or I can click on security risk. I am more interested in security <laughs> risk than porn. Let's see. Decker says, no gender, no nicknames, no talking to it. To which Janet says, right. Should I start it up? And Decker says, go ahead. It's the only choice I've had so far. Loaded start boot process. Let's do this. I feel like that is an accurate Lauren quote, Chrono. Honestly. <laughs> can you, you can still see. Cat butt. She's silly. All right, let's start the boot process. Oh, it has sound effects. Bell slash S. OS, Elemental Firewall Toolkit, version 5.6, Terminal, HTML, GUI, Graphical User, that's Graphical User Interface, ready, loading the file system, okay, re-entering file system is root, building tree, okay, searching for filtration rules, hold on, let me, we're gonna, we're gonna switch the song because it's got singing, I like it, but, okay, building tree, okay, Searching for filtration rules found. Filtration rules found. Initializing firewall. Okay. Setting up system variables. Okay. Uploading config file. Okay. Incantation.xml. Starting login daemon. Exercising login daemon. System up and stable. Opening sorcery. Okay. So what's fun here, <laughs> here is that one... When looks at this and thinks, oh, okay, this is fine. I get it. I get it. And then the incantation demons. All right. I don't know if we're going to have like actual demons or if they're choosing to use demons and, can't, and, and incantation kind of as the skinning of their uh, technology. Are we going to have like techno witches? There's a word for that. I don't remember what it is. Uh, yeah, magical programming. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Technomancer. Yes. Okay. Chrono and I got it at the same time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Incantation.xml. Opening sorcery. Okay. So I've got a bunch of things I can click on here. I have no idea why I would click on any of these. And this one right up here at the top. I don't know, but I'm going to click on incantation. Ooh. XML version 1.0. Encoding UTF-8. I feel like I've seen... I don't know what UTF is. Um, verse. First, rehearse your song by rote. To each word, a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy glaze. Grace, will we sing and bless this place. There's code stuff around it, but... Okay. Tree. Is this actually going to be a tree tree? World tree. Okay. Yggdrasil. Tree. I can click on these until they stop being clickable. HTML. Hypertext magical language. All right, so this is magical programming. Technomancy, if you will. Okay, so this is going to tell us what BL, B E L slash S is. Binary evocation listener slash signaler. Okay. Yeah, we might have missed something by not clicking on porn, or maybe we just. Maybe we just did not get a virus. 
<laughs> Whoo! Opening sorcery! Open sorcery. A game about technology, magic, and becoming a person. Alright. Log file one. Clark's third law. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. That would be noted uh, science fiction writer. Arthur Clark, right? Okay, log file two. Clark's third law reversed. Any sufficiently analyzed magic is indistinguishable from technology. That sounds more like Sanderson-esque, as I understand it. Oh, is that a particular reference to... Oh, Phil Folio. Okay. Interesting. The specific phrasing that Chrono used is very, very similar to the specific phrasing used in this game, thereby uh, uh, indicating that this is an intentional reference to that that Chrono is familiar with. Log file three. Hi, sysadmin Ada Lovelace, quote, The spiritual world is like a black box program whose API is completely undocumented. Hi, sysadmin. That sounds like high priestess. Interesting. I don't know what that means. But now we have magic and spirituality in the context of programming. Okay. Bell slash S Elemental Firewall version 5.6 is an elemental spirit of fire bound to C++ code built to prevent malicious spirits from gaining access to your environment through the ethernet. Environment, environment, through your, to your body, mind, soul. That's concerning. I am online. Hold on, I need to make the window a bit bigger because you can't see that button. Ada Lovelace was in fact the mother of computer computers. She and Babbage, I think, worked together and she got really frustrated with him for messing up everything she did. Alright. I am online. I am online. I am fire and order. I am here to protect. I do not capitalize. Oh, there's a scroll bar? Oh, there is a scroll bar. You're right. Okay, well, let me know if this cuts things off badly, but otherwise we're going to go with this. I explore my network. I find DW, DW, HISCL, CHORRET, DKAPT, JTHS. These are the locations I must protect. Okay, my network. I live in a network. Everything is connected. Symbols are connected to the object they represent. Humans are connected to other humans that they love or hate. Each connection is a strand. Together, the strands create a web. My network is the part of that web that I am allowed to access. My network is made of the places I must protect. Notice that actually things are capitalized. The beginnings of sentences are capitalized with one exception. If the word that is at the beginning of the sentence is a pronoun referring to the speaker, I and my are both not capitalized in this context. It's interesting to have my here not capitalized. Um, that really reinforces that it's a in very intentional stylistic decision. So I think we're going to get to know people and their relationships. I think that's going to be central in some way. Um, symbols are connected to the objects they represent. Humans are connected to humans that they love or hate. And I suspect that our, our character here, our, our firewall, is going to begin to love and hate others as well. I explore my network, I find. Let's see what's... Because I assume that DK is... DK apt is someone's apartment. D-W-H-I... Something high school. This is something high school. Oh, man. And this is a something else. I don't know. Let's see. Darwin High School, a place of learning filled with children. Corrette. Cherry Orchard, Orchard Rest Home. A place of rest filled with the old. Decker apartment. Decker's apartment. The home of one of my creators. JTHS. Janet's house. The home of my other creator and her family. These are the locations I must protect. So we're going to have a high school. 
and Old Hulk's home, my rest home. Decker and Janet, we will get to know them. Decker does not have a family. Janet does to such a degree that she has a house, which is very homelike and very family focused. I notice an alert. Someone is trying to give me instructions. Janet. That's Janet says, welcome to being awake. I'm Janet. I helped make you smiley. I'm activating your conversational API. Well, you can use a TCP connection to interface with conscious entities. Basically, you can talk to people. <laughs> Let's see what TCP translates to in this universe. Telepathic communications protocol. What is that usually? Because I'm pretty sure that that, that, has, that that acronym exists in our world with a slightly different meaning, which it seems like all of the acronyms that are like programming language like this are going to be an alternate form of an acronym that exists in our real world. Transmission control protocol. Thank you, May. Okay, so I can click on it. It'll it'll tell me what the word is, and then it'll um, it'll go away. Okay. Continue. Anyway, do you need a systems check? Would you like to go to the tutorial? Yes. Oh, Bell says my name. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. Janet says. So you're here to protect the network. You do that by finding dangerous spirits and getting rid of them. That's interesting. Have humans uh, connected to the internet, the Ethernet, um, and in doing so opened themselves up not to uh, malicious humans loosing uh, viruses and so on, um, but to spirits because this is a spiritual network of some sort. I don't know. I guess so. Continue. Janet continues. A spirit is anything that exists exclusively in the spiritual world, like ghosts or spells or elemental forces or astral programs like you. In their natural state, they're invisible, but you have specialized scanners you can use to lock in on them. You just need to figure out their matter and motive. Oh, cool. I mean, I get to, oh my gosh, am I going to like, am I going to use my powers of deductive reasoning and also conversation to figure out what these spirits need to get them to go away or to move on or something probably maybe let's see what's up okay i clicked on matter and motive and janet says everything that exists in the aether has two parts matter and motive matter what the spirit is made of motive its purpose Physical beings like me are made of lots of different types of matter and have complicated motives. Most spirits are simpler. For example, you. Am I simpler? Am I really? Hi, Phil. Welcome. We are we are exploring and adventuring through um, interactive fiction. Janet says, we made you out of a fire elemental spirit. You are made out of fire. That's your matter. Wait, how did you make me out of a spirit? That seems awfully rude to the spirit. I don't know. Fire gets different colored. Colored. You can see. You can see my um, my mouse, right? My cursor. So uh, you can see me circling fire. Spirits. Maybe they don't have. Well, I don't know. They have a motive. What is my motive? Your mind is an elaborate C plus plus program. It's organized and well documented and designed with everything you need to keep things safe and secure. You're here to create order. That's your motive. That's a very dangerously simplistic motive. You should not. Also, order is actually kind of a dangerous thing to have too much of. So we go to N3 explores that. Notice that order also has a different color, which makes me wonder if it's kind of an element in a way. Um, So my mind is orderly and gives me tools. Janet says, you'll be able to guess the matter and motive of other spirits by looking at what they're doing. Look at what's being affected to figure out their matter. Air spirits stir up the air and make breezes. Dark spirits make things darker. You get the idea. Look at the overall effect they're having to figure out their motive. Chaos spirits will try to cause confusion, play pranks, and mess things up. Fear spirits will try to divide people and make them afraid. 
death spirits will try to diminish or kill things and so on. Okay, these are all a little bit more intensive <laughs> than, a, than air spirits. You know, making wind is a little bit less uh, concerning than trying to kill things, you know? Janet says, I'm releasing a minor spirit into my room. You won't be able to see it initially, but you'll be able to see what it's doing. Try and figure out its matter and motive and then scan for it. The walls of Janet's room are painted sky blue. Her desk is cluttered. Puddles of water collect on the polished wood floor. Okay, I like that her room is sky blue. That's interesting. Her desk is cluttered. Janet's desk is covered in polished stones, pens, paper, and Game Boy cartridges. Her things are thrown haphazardly around, and some have fallen onto the floor. Some of her papers are soggy. There's a Game Boy. Okay. Puddles of water collect on the polished wood floor. The puddles are shaped like three-toed footprints. They lead into the bathroom. Let's go into the bathroom. In the bathroom... Everything in the medicine cabinet has been scattered onto the floor. The tub is full of water. So it appears to be causing chaos. It appears to be a water spirit that is trying to make a mess. Time to scan. Step one, select matter. Matter? Oh, water. Motive? Chaos. Let's try this. Initiate scan. Searching. Search finished. Threat detected. A tiny crocodile shaped water spirit is swimming in Janet's tub, splashing happily in the water. Oh my god. An adorable little gator. Yay. Janet says, good job. You found Toto. He's one of my pets. If Toto were a real threat, you'd figure out how to stop him, or contact me and Decker to deal with him. But he's harmless, so don't worry about that, Smiley. Is he really? I don't know. Right now, I'm not taking everything. I'm not taking anything that they tell me. That's the truth. Okay, that's it. I think you're ready. I'll send you back to your network. Good luck. And we just unlocked the achievement system checked. Moment. Okay, uh, Blue Glass asks if we can take a moment to look at the possibilities for matter and motive. So there, there seems to be a, a, sh a very short list, a list of only of only six options for each. Um, I don't know if that's going to change with each encounter, um, but we'll see. But yeah, yeah, I can I can read through the whole list if you'd like. Okay, so I chose continue. I will scan each location for threats. If I detect the presence of a threat, I will identify it, attempt to eliminate it, alert my creators if I cannot eliminate it. It is time to work. I don't know. Eliminating. I don't know. We'll see. I feel like the crocodile being named Toto is, um, I mean, I guess that's specifically a crocodile. I want to say that that's Hold on. I'm going to look something up. I got distracted. Yes, that is a Pokemon. That is a water type Pokemon, Totodile. Thank you. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> All right. Currently monitoring Darwin High School. Date October 24th, 2014. Set in the past for us now. State needs scan. Scan for threats. You can change view. Yes, Janet has a Pokemon, so I'm wondering how many other of these lovely little references we'll get. Um I have a menu. I do have a menu. Okay. How does an elemental firewall help protect me? I'm gonna look at this, then I'll scan. The Bell's Elemental Firewall version 5.6 is an elemental spirit of fire bound to C++ code. It can help prevent hackers or malicious spirits from gaining access to your environment through the Ethernet. Ethernet. I'm going to say Ethernet. 
Vals does this in a variety of ways. Monitoring local auras for emotional upheaval, inspecting incoming spirits and spells for malicious intent, detecting and eliminating threats. Bells is open sorcery. <laughs> Please feel free to download and distribute the code. You'll need to make your own elemental though, smiley. So Janet wrote that because Janet is the one who puts smileys. Yes. I could get you spinach dip. No, I can't actually, I don't know how. All right, so we'll save the game here. Day one, how to protect, back to game. Okay, environment, your body, your mind, your soul. Those are not things you want malicious spirits or hackers to have access to. I did check the options. That's how we are in a windowed mode so that I can actually capture this on stream and also um, have chat. And somebody suggested that I change something on the timing. So we've got that. Sophie is still a little lump. All right, let us continue monitoring. Monitoring local auras for emotional upheaval though. I do kind of wonder what's up with that. Okay. Oh, I have a control panel. Oh, power level is not over 9,000. Okay. Oh, look at that. System matter, fire, system motive, order. I wonder if that'll change eventually. Decker relationship, 55%. Janet relationship, 70%. Neat. Okay, let's go back to the high school. I need to become friends with everybody. Okay, scan for threats is obviously what we're supposed to do. It's in a white box. Scanning Darwin High School. I move through this place, quick as brush fire, subtle as sunlight, leaving no sign of my passing, except for the slight warmth of my power. It's like poetry. It's beautiful. Beautiful and, and, and excellent because the imagery here is very effective and very powerful, but it also, you'll notice, is, is specific to fire. Clever. It works on multiple levels. Scanning Darwin High School. This stone box thrums with patterned life. It has a heartbeat. First, the children are still in their many chambers. And then they stream through the halls in mad torrents of bodies. And then they are still again, and then they flow again. The building is a living thing, young and restless. I will keep it healthy. Let's take a look at the halls, the veins. It's interesting, just another way of looking at it. If it has a heartbeat, and they are the blood flowing through the chambers. Then the halls would be the veins, torrents of bodies, blood. Yes, I will keep it healthy. Scan complete, no threats detected. Continue monitoring. State protected. Let's go to Cherry Orchard Rest Home. Scan for threats. I float through this place, moving carefully. I am a hooded lantern. My power glows like lamplight, shining gently on these delicate humans. Again, it's like poetry. Not quite poetry. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't have rhythm, but it has very, very intentional. Like, it doesn't have the cadence of poetry, but it has the very, very intentional spare imagery um, of poetry. The heart of this building beats weakly. Its people trundle through the halls, leaning on crutches and wheels. It is in these vulnerable places where I am most necessary and where I must be most careful. I do not want to burn them with power or startle them with light. I am the fire that protects. It's nice to have an immediate contrast between the high school and the, uh, the rest home. Click on protects. The halls are lined with doors. Each room is a home. Oh good, I get to be really nosy. I'm gonna go into people's rooms. Let's let's go meet our characters, shall we? Room 109. Mrs. Heron shrieks as a gust of wind flutters her papers everywhere. Sounds like we've got um, an air elemental there. Room 121. Mr. Doheny. Doheny has lost his glasses. Room 231. Miss Finn complains on the phone that the air conditioning is on the fritz. Cold wind whips up and down the second floor corridors. Room 240. Mrs. Best shivers wrapped in her shawl. 
These are not normal accidents. I can feel it in the aether. Something is here. Yes, it, it would appear that we have some sort of a chaotic air spirit. Everything that exists in the aether has two parts, matter and motive. Humans are made of many different kinds of matter and have complex motives. Most spirits are much simpler. For example, me. I am made of fire, that is my matter. I am here to create order, that is my motive. My motive drives me to find and eliminate this threat. Okay, so if you didn't play the intro, they want to make sure you have the basics. To locate the threat, I must scan specifically for its matter and motive. I can find clues about its matter and motive by reviewing my general scan. All right. So we have air, water, dark, light, fire, and earth as the matter. I'm going to say that it is air because the air conditioning is having problems and things are flying around. Um, and things have gone missing. So this all sounds like pranks. So I'm going to say that this is air. The motive, life, love, chaos, order, fear, and death. It's interesting because these are directly in opposition to one another. You have life and death, love and fear, chaos and order. And each of those, like, and that's why they're, they're split into two. Um, here, I'm going to say that it's it's chaos. Um, which is fine, like, we've, we've already had chaos, and we know. And chaos is the least concerning. Uh, I'm curious about life and love as motives for spirits. That I suppose we'll, we'll find out eventually. All right. Chaos. I'm going to initiate the scan. I'm going to assume this is an air creature and a chaos, uh, a chaos motive. Let's find out. Searching. Search finished. Threat detected. A poltergeist cavorts invisibly in the cafeteria. It slaps plates out of hands and knocks over glasses with gusts of wind. It giggles at the chaos it causes in this place I must protect. What should I do? I think I can probably play with it. Let's speak to it. I don't want to cleanse it with fire immediately. Let's speak to it. Bells. Log alert flagged important with detected threat. Attention detected threat. The poltergeist says, eh heh heh. Who is this? What is this? New thing. New thing. What are you? What should I say? I can either introduce myself and say, I am Bell's Elemental Firewall version 5.6, or I am not important, or you are a threat. I think I will. Let's see what happens if I introduce myself. Poltergeist says, well met by moonlight. I am Asper. I am a princeling of clouds. I am a child of Eris. I have no numbers in my name. <laughs> Asper. Is that like Asper? Is that like, is that the, the, the airness of this creature? I don't know. But this princeling of clouds. I appreciate that, 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 that it, it, they have a very simple, straightforward, like exuberant way of speaking. Polite request, please leave. I'm going to ask. You're a child of Eris. You'll probably not not respect my polite request, but I, I, I would rather not fight you. Poltergeist says, oh, I could leave. I most certainly could do any of a number of things, but shall I? That is the great question. The eternal quest of man to conquer the uncertainty of the future. Shall I leave or shall I not? And I can either say, yes, you shall, or are you going to leave? I'm going to take a pacifist option and see what happens. Are you going to leave? Poltergeist says, This is the puzzle. To answer outright would be telling, but listen close, dear Bells, and I will tell you the answer. To which my only response is, I am listening. Poltergeist says, I will ask you three riddles, and you will try to answer them. If you win, I shall leave. If I win, then I win, and I will laugh at you. I can either say affirmative or no. Let's take these riddles. Let's see how we do. <laughs> Phil, I appreciate that. Leave and there'll be trouble. Stay and it'll be double. All right. Let's take these riddles. Affirmative. To which Poltergeist says, Delightful, splendid, extraordinary. Let us play. The first riddle. A red drum 
which sounds without being touched and grows silent when it is touched. What am I? I mean, I'm going to say a heart because it beats. But if you did actually touch the heart, you would probably hurt. I don't know. I'm trying to think of what else would be a red drum. Yeah, it's neat that we have, we have, so I wonder if I can actually type with my own actual keyboard here. Interestingly, some of the letters, yeah, I know Chrono, I thought that too. Um, some of the letters are bigger than others. But they do appear to be in the right place. Okay, so I cannot type. Like, I feel like the answer to this is heart. Because I feel like I'm thinking in in riddle, in, in riddle ways when I say that, you know? A red drum, which sounds that being touched. Oh, wait, I can save. I can save. I'm going to save. And it is thematic as well. Yes. first riddle okay sweet it fits because we've talked about the heart and the the children playing I'm going to go with this this is my answer you say heart very well then poltergeist says you guess heart you guess right another riddle for you affirmative Poltergeist says, "'Twas foremost in heaven, "'twas first off in hell, "'an echo caught faintly the sound as it fell. "'At the end of the earth "'twas permitted to rest, "'and the last of all depth "'was its presence confessed.'" Oh, that's H. It's... I was going to go with the first two lines that it was, that was the letter H, um, because foremost and first in both heaven and hell is H. But then if you'll notice, echo has H capitalized. Earth, the end of the earth, an H capitalized, twas permitted to rest. And the last of all, depth, another H capitalized at the end, was its presence confessed. So I'm going to go with my answer is H. You say H? Very well then. Poltergeist says, you guess H, you guess right. Another riddle for you. Affirmative. Oh, that's cute, Nick. A bonus by giving an answer to one of the riddle contest. That's really cool. Well, so Blue Glass, I feel like in the case of especially this early in the game, they don't, the point of this isn't to try to make you fail. The point of it is to maybe warm you up and get you thinking a little bit outside the box, but it, they want you to succeed. All right. <clears throat> often held, but never touched. Always wet, but never rusts. Often bites, but seldom bit. To use me well, you must have wit. Tongue. Because you can have, you can, you can have, a, you can, you can, you can speak in a biting manner, but you seldom bite your tongue. You can hold your tongue, but you don't touch your tongue. Your tongue is wet, but it doesn't rust. So use me well, you must have wit. That's actually what, 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 what did it for me. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Tongue. There's a particular way of thinking that you have to do to solve this kind of riddle. Um, and so kids have a really hard time until they kind of learn to shift their thinking into riddle thinking. All right. This is my answer. Very well, then. You guess right. Poltergeist flutters about in shock. And then Bells says, I have won. You will leave now. The poltergeist says, you won. You dull and boring gray thing of order won against me. Scandalous! Wrong! How delightfully surprising! And I got an achievement for this. Bells says, will you leave now? I love that the poltergeist is like, there is no reason why you should win. <laughs> this is great. You are boring and orderly, and I am a thing of chaos, and yet you beat me at my own game. Perhaps I am not actually a creature of order. Perhaps I have been told to do order. Will you leave now? Says Bells. 
Poltergeist says, As I am chaos, it would be most unexpected to, for me to keep my word. So I shall. <laughs> Goodbye, you woman of boredom and fire. Perhaps I shall see you again when the novelty of keeping my word wears thin. Well, I'm glad that worked. So the poltergeist is recognizing me as a woman of fire. Bells envisions herself as a woman of fire. That, that apparently was her own creation. That's interesting. So Bells says, fine. The poltergeist departs. I feel different. I realize I have learned something. I learned chaos. That's an achievement. Chaos is the element counter to order. I do not much like it. It is messy and random, but there is something about it. It makes everything feel new. Riddles are interesting. I guess that is something. System change. Learned about chaos, which is this horrible shade of highlighter yellow. <laughs> yes, it is very chaos spirit feeling while still actually having you win by talking your way through it. So I'm just going to try to talk my way through everything. We'll see if that actually works. Continue. It is strange that I am learning. It is a sign of potential awareness emergence. If I experience awareness emergence, I may become unstable. Should I flag myself as a potential threat and alert Decker of what I have learned? Yes or no? Hmm. Decker is going to want to shut her down. Janet is already leaning towards anthropomorphizing her. But Decker has expressed concern about that. And I might set I might set things on fire and become a big problem <laughs> if I get out of control. I am of course inclined to want to free this creature from servitude. Um, there may be consequences of that. Do I immediately prove myself untrustworthy and not tell Decker? Or at this well at this point I am young and new. And and perhaps you know what what, what why don't we role play? Let's role play. I would say that from the point of view of a new creature who who is still an orderly creature, the only way an orderly creature would disregard orders like this would be if actually the creature is not actually orders, or is not actually orderly, um, and the real identity is creeping through, which would be concerning. So I think that provided that this, that this elemental being um, is new to this, well, it's not that you're, that you're untrustworthy. It's just saying, like, my system has done this. But then I might lose the ability to use chaos, which might might be a bad idea. From a gameplay perspective, I want to say, like, no, of course I wouldn't tell Decker this. From a from a role-playing perspective, if I were to role-play what makes sense for a creature um, in this situation, I, the thing is, from a from a narrative flow... It would it would be better for the um, for the, the the character to to not keep this secret. Um, having done the thing itself indicates the potential for change, um, but I feel like from a narrative perspective, it is too big a step, too much, too fast. You have to establish, you have to establish the baseline of what you're supposed to be before you can break it. I'm already doing something against the grain. Now I have to. Now I have to establish the, the baseline. Now I have to establish what the orderly creature would do. That's that's what I think. Perhaps if this is an adventure game, then we save. I guess we'll delete this and we'll save here. I have learned this. Alright, let's let's tell Decker. Because we can always change our mind, but I feel that the, I feel that the thing that would be the most narratively interesting if I were writing this as a story. I would have that where you break with it, but then you tell on yourself. So you, so you have just enough. Otherwise, like you might as well not even be an order spirit and they just shut you down. I wonder if this is going to be like a choose your own adventure story where there's multiple endings and if you, uh, and you can, you can get wiped out and have to load from a save. Uh, we'll see. Let's, let's find out. Okay. I will output my decisions into a log file and email him the file as an attachment. I will mark the email potential threat. He will know what to do. Let's email him the file as an attachment. <laughs> Decker says it learned about chaos. How did it even do that? Janet says life is full of mysteries. Okay, so Decker doesn't seem overly concerned at this point. He's concerned, but not overly concerned. 
because I did the thing that I should do and recognize that something is a little strange here and tell on myself. No threats detected. I wonder if I will detect Decker as a threat at some point. We'll see. Janet's pretty chill about this. Scan complete. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. Currently monitoring Cherry Orchard Rest Home. Protected. The high school. Protected. Decker's apartment. Needs scan. Scan for threats. Let's do this. Decker's apartment. This is where my first creator lives. The room is small. There are tools and ideas everywhere. It is perfect order disguised as chaos. Every dusty motherboard is in its place. Every screwdriver and empty crisp bag is where it should be. All right, so we are not in the US because they're called crisps. Potato chips. Perfect order disguised as chaos. That is such a good way of putting it. I love that, especially when order and chaos are part of the story and setting and, and so on. That's neat. All right, continue scanning. My terminal is in the corner, humming. The line of the lines of my power extend from it, a grid-like matrix of spiritual flame. The defensive runes hum comfortingly. Decker is at his desk working on something. This is his natural state. Amazing. Okay. So I am vulnerable to Decker if he decides I am a danger because my terminal is in the corner of his apartment. Let's look at these defensive runes. They are comforting to me. A series of protective runes carved in jasper and pyrite are placed around the room. Their primi this primitive protection circle offers rudimentary defense against mystical attack. I am a significant upgrade. Interesting. He has something that is not dependent on an element. So his natural state. Let's click on state. Scan complete. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. He's doing fine. Okay, let's take a look at Janet's house. Currently monitoring Janet's house and has a smiley. Anytime there's a smiley on something, I assume that it is Janet's. All right, let us scan for threats here. This is where my second creator lives. It has two stories and a back and front space where green things grow. It's, it's a good way of, of phrasing things without the recognition or familiarity. A back and front space where green things grow. A yard in American English. A garden in British English. I don't know what other parts of the world call it. We're Googling dot dot dot. I'm Googling the green things. Grass and trees grow. Okay, so I have consulted with the internet to identify what these are. I have learned something too. Um, continue scanning. In the kitchen, Janet's mother makes her brother edible organic matter. In her room upstairs, Janet is working with her cell phone in a ritual circle made of salt and rose quartz. The aether around her glows faintly pink. All is well. Okay, so Janet lives here with her mother and her brother, which makes me wonder if she is young. I thought maybe she, she was grown and had a family of her own, um, but if she is a, if she's a kid, that's interesting. Let's look at this edible organic matter. Googling. A peanut butter and honey sandwich. Ooh, I like peanut butter and honey sandwiches. Maybe we are in the US though, because like, peanut butter, I am led to believe is a very American food. That's what they tell me. A cell phone and a ritual circle made of salt and rose quartz. I like the juxtaposition, the technology and uh, and magic. All is well. Click on well. No threats detected. All locations secure. Enter sleep mode. She could be a teen at the high school. Possibly. Be interesting that she and Decker, a grown man, are collaborating on creating this, this creature to keep their region safe. Let's enter sleep mode sleeping now I am sleeping what does one do while sleeping I will google it the screen has changed to be black text on a white background instead of the other way around interesting let us google what one does while sleeping googling sleep googling REM googling dreams oh no am I going to dream dreaming sounds interesting though I do not like the sound of nightmares should I try dreaming yes this is 
purely, this is perfect innocence. Dream. Noun. One. A succession of images, thoughts, or emotions passing through the mind during sleep. I have found a dream dictionary online. It has entries for all of the things that can be dreamed. I will hook up a random number I will hook up a random number generator to every entry in the dream dictionary. That way, my dreams will always be understandable. Mm, there will be a time that she will dream and it will not be in the dictionary. That's that will be telling. Initializing dreaming. Oh, that's beautiful. Dreaming. Roller coaster. Shoes. Lion. Colt. Hair. Cultural clothing. Basement. Airplane. Cow. Continue dreaming. Camel. Factory. Swimming pool. Black panther. Nose. Bathrobe. Fire truck. Immobilized body parts. Frog. Continue dreaming. Dog. Apples. Gun. Money. Thigh. Limousine. Serpent. Auto repair shop. Feather. I think I'll finish dreaming. We've done we've done three three rounds of random dreaming. Let's finish dreaming. I have dreamed. It is now time to scan again. System change. Dreaming plus one. Interesting. Exiting sleep mode. System has been operational for one day. It is time to continue monitoring. Currently monitoring Darwin High School. October 25th, 2014. State needs scan. Scan for threats. I don't know that I would say it's a random word generator. I think they probably had a dream dictionary, so they have things that are likely to come up in dream di in dreams according to a dream dictionary. And then they randomly choose from that. Let's scan for threats in the high school. It is night. The halls are dark. The life-giving students are gone. The building is an empty shell. There is no danger in emptiness. Did I sleep too long? I might have slept too long. There is something very ominous about this. The simplicity of the writing. You can make something so powerful. The most powerful sentences will be short and direct. If you want something to have... If you want something to cut your reader, pare it down. Purple prose is, is is one of my favorite things. I love it. I love it dearly, and it's very good for flavor. It's very good for getting across chaos or tumbling emotions or a beautiful image or something complex. But if you really, really, really want something to be powerful, make it as simple a sentence as possible. We could be in Australia. Do they eat peanut butter a lot in Australia? Can anyone confirm that? Scan complete. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. The retirement home. Scan for threats. Well, we have crisps bags, so that, that could be... Do they call them crisps in Australia? Yes, Blue Glass. I really enjoy playing with the cadence of my sentences very intentionally. And the, the, the length of my paragraphs are very... Um, I, I, I like to never have two paragraphs to be the same length, if I can help it. And then I try not to have too many sentences that are the same length in a row. Um, but yes, you can you can do a lot of very intentional things, varying up your sentence structure and your paragraph structure. I really, really enjoy playing with that. If I were to move into an audio medium, I wonder... I wonder how that would change the cadence when it's no longer on the page. That's something I, I'm going to be exploring. All right, scan for threats. The building is asleep. There is one point of light where the night attendant sits. Everything else is silent halls and soft breathing. So I can look through the rooms or click on there are no threats. I'm going to look through the rooms. <laughs> Thanks, Blue Glass. I was actually working on um, working on the next chapter of the fanfic. Um, I, I'm, I'm polishing the ever-loving heck out of the section that's written because I'm intimidated by writing the section that's not written. Um, so we'll see how it winds up. But I think it could be another good chapter when it's done. All right. Room 109. Mrs. Heron's room is empty. She must have died. 
Mr. Doheny snores chokingly because he hates to use his CPAP machine. I wonder if these names are references to something. <laughs> she must have died. There's just That's just such a neutral statement. Room 231. Miss Finn reads a romance novel by Lamplight. Room 240. Mrs. Best is leaking. Is crying. There is water coming out of her eyes. Is she hurt? I know humans leak when they are hurt. Googling injury. Googling bleeding. Googling human eye liquid. Googling tears. Tears mean sadness. They are water things. I do not understand water things. What should I do? If I had these options, look, there's some options that are grayed out. To remove her fear or call Toby. Oh, baby. Yes? Sophie is, is meowing in her dream. Yes? So apparently I do want to learn these things. And then I have more options that open up to me. I'm going to talk to her. Because that's what I I try to speak with her, sending messages into her mind through the network of everything that connects us. It frightens her, so I stop. Tears mean sadness. They are water things. I do not understand water things. What should I do? Call Toby? Unavailable. Requires relationship. Toby. Remove her fear. Unavailable. Requires motive. Fear. I'm going to alert Janet and Decker. Ha ha ha, Decker's going to be frustrated with me about this. Okay, Bell's log alert with local admin Decker and Janet. Alert regarding private physical network Cherry Orchard Rest Home. See attached log file. Janet is snoring. Decker says, I'm awake. Show me the alert. I don't think he's going to like the fact that I'm concerned about someone crying. Okay, what's happening, Decker says. Now live streaming video, Administrator Decker. Decker says, I see. I see why you flagged me. It is sad, but there's really nothing we can do about that. Sometimes people are sad. That's just how people are. Not everything needs a magic fix. Go finish your scans. Continue scanning. System change, plus five to relationship with Decker. System change, Decker relationship at 60%. He liked that, actually. This is so interesting because... It, it's, it's both correct and incorrect. It is true. Sometimes people are sad and you can't just make things better. Uh, but sometimes you can do something about it. And I, f I get the feeling that maybe Decker isn't very... Like, maybe people aren't Decker's specialty. I mean, I'm just going to generalize here. I think he's like, going to be the hacker type. Um, we'll see. Um, I appreciate that he, he likes... Like, my, the fact that my relationship improved. Basically, the firewall is like... Something is bad. And he's like, oh, you're worried about this person being sad. That's good. Thank you for flagging me. I like that. I like that. This this makes me like Decker more because Decker has compassion. And I think despite himself, actually, he might wind up thinking of Bells as a person as well. If we keep this up. Let's continue scanning. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. So there's nothing else in the high school. Yeah, we don't know who Toby is, but we now know that there's an op there will be options. And letting us know this early, I wonder if there's a way that we could have gotten that earlier. Um, I wonder if things are randomized or based on choices that I made. For example, if I hadn't played with the Chaos Demon, I wonder whether um, I could have had a different story play out there that might have had me get to know the character Toby that I could then use to solve this problem. But instead of solving whatever's going on with her, I improved my relationship with Decker, so it's not a loss. Like, things are developing. Let's scan for threats in Decker's apartment, shall we? Having just had a moment where we connected with him. It is night. Decker is working. Pale moonlight shines through his window. Pale screen light shines from the windows inside of his room. The windows inside of his room. His screens. They are windows inside of his room. 
The defensive runes hum comfortingly and glow slightly in the moonlight. At some point, those defensive runes are not going to be working, and I'm going to have to help him. There are no threats. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. Let's go to Janet's house. Scan for threats. Janet is asleep on the couch in her room, television still alive in front of her. Janet's mother is asleep, lying on the far right side of a queen-sized bed. Janet's brother is awake. Okay, so interestingly, Janet has a couch in her room instead of instead of a bed. Um, the television is alive. Um, it is interesting that that slightly wrong word is uh, it's very telling. Um, from one te te technological ish being to another. So Janet's mother's asleep lying on the far right side of a queen size bed tells me that somebody else is supposed to sleep on the other side of that bed. At some point in time, someone else has slept on the other side of that bed. That is a very specific detail. I don't know if that will mean that Janet's father is absent. I don't know if Decker, for example, is maybe the divorced dad or if Decker is a peer. Um, I don't know. Janet's brother is awake. Let's see what this kiddo is up to. I assume he's a kid. Yeah. Uh, no, I appreciate I appreciate not having time constraints. That makes me feel better. Janet's brother is awake. He sits with his back pressed against the headboard of his bed. He is staring at his closet door, which is ajar. Examine Toby or examine the closet. Okay, so Toby is the name of the brother. So if I had a relationship with Toby, if I knew Toby, I could have called him. So doing things in order is not necessarily the best way to go. Let's try this. Let's examine Toby. His eyes are more white than dark. His heart beats 160 times per minute. He does not move, though sometimes his eyes flicker to the shadows. He is experiencing fear. Let us... His heart beats 160 times per minute. According to the Fox and Haskell formula I found on Wikipedia, Toby should currently be performing anaerobic exercise to achieve this heart rate. He is not currently performing anaerobic exercise. <laughs> the writing there, that's just, it's very funny. It's very understated. It works. Let us examine the closet. Shall we see this, this fear creature? The shadows are deeper than they should be. The inside of the closet door is scratched. Something has been here. Locate threat. There is a threat. I must scan specifically for its matter and motive. It is darkness and it is fear. So these are once again in opposition to one another, I suppose, because dark and light are in opposition to one another. Water and fire are in opposition to one another. And therefore I assume that air and earth must be opposites. I'm going to go with dark and I'm going to go with fear. Maybe I will learn fear from this. In which case, if I had done this first, I would then be in a better position to help the old lady. But it's okay because I got to know I got to know Decker better. All right. I'm fairly confident that this one is dark and fear. Eventually, we may find things that have more complex motives. It should be interesting. Let's initiate the scan, shall we? And then I'll have to actually do something about it. I'm a little concerned about this. Searching. Search finished. Threat detected. Sorry if you can hear the, the piano downstairs. There is a shadow on the wall. It is deeper than the other shadows. Its claws are sharp as the edge where light meets dark. Its shuffling steps are like leaves rustling in the wind. Its breath is the chill you feel when you realize you are not alone. Its smile is the crescent moon, a silver curve of teeth. Very short, very beautiful sentences. All right, you are not alone. Let us greet this creature. The threat has moved out of Toby's room. It crouches in the hallway. Shivering strands of Toby's fear still hang out of its mouth. It snatches more from the air with its long coiling tongue. What should I do? I can cleanse it with fire, which is probably the easier policy, or I can speak to it. Or I can alert Janet, or I can alert Toby. Interestingly, alerting Toby does not have a period at the end. Part of me wants to alert Toby, but I think he might not be very good here. Speaking to it is the sort of thing that I would normally do. 
Janet is asleep. I'm not sure I could wake her up. They specifically don't give you the option of Decker. I would like to have a relationship with Toby. And I'm a little scared of it, but... These are my two options. What am I going to do? Will I speak to it? Or will I alert Toby? I feel like speaking to it is the thing to do. Toby is not somebody that I have in my database to alert. So I'll speak to it. Bells. Log alert flagged important with detected threat. Attention direct detected threat. Shadow thing hisses. You are attempting to access an emotional network marked private. You do not have permission to access this network. The shadow thing chitters. What should I say, say next? I can either say please remove yourself or I can log alert flagged intimidating threat with detected threat. Please remove yourself. Please remove yourself from this network in a timely and efficient matter. Manner. It chitters. It. Bells says, please get out. It growls. It is not leaving. What should I say next? Let's flag it intimidating threat with detected threat. Oh my god. I am now... I'm just... I, I, I love Bells. Bells has a personality. Listen to this. Log alert flagged intimidating threat with detected threat. Bells says, I am fire and order incarnate. This is the house. I am the wall. You will upload yourself elsewhere or I will burn you until your ashes are ashes. Notice how effective capitalizing the first word of every sentence is in communicating tone. And yet still, Belle's own pronouns are lowercase. Yes, the shadow thing is scared. <laughs> this is the house. I am the wall. You will upload yourself elsewhere. Or I will burn you until your ashes are ashes. I'm giving it a chance. It squeaks. The detected threat scuttles quickly out through the shadowy nexus in Toby's closet. I close the nexus behind it. I feel different. Oh, this is neat, actually, because I, I did learn fear. I learned to use fear against it, which is actually really nice um, because it's not just that I learned fear because I'm, I'm exposed to fear. I learned fear because I did fear, if that makes sense. I feel different. I realize I have learned something. Fear is the motive counter to love. It creates distance. It severs connections. It is the foundation of wisdom. It preserves life. When I threatened the dark thing, I created fear. I understand fear now. System change. Learned about fear. Okay, so I guess just, just yellow just means that this is a an attribute. I love fear is not just straight up like an evil thing. It is the foundation of wisdom. It preserves life. It's true. It is true, fear, fear serves a purpose. It can be very useful, um, even in ourselves. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yes. Amazing. I need to learn these other motives, though. Creates distance. Yeah, chaos was more of a highlighter color. This is more of a bright, bright yellow. Actually, no, you're right. Continue. It is strange that I am learning. It is a sign of potential awareness emergence. If I experience awareness emergence, I may become unstable. Should I flag myself as a potential threat and alert Decker of what I have learned? Yes. Let's try that. This might decrease my relationship with Decker. I will output my decisions into a log file and email him the file as an attachment. I will mark the email potential threat. He will know what to do. Decker says dot dot dot. And Janet says, you're making a face. D Decker says dot dot dot. And Janet says, what is this face? Decker says, so the firewall has been incorporating new elements into itself, which is sort of good, makes it more flexible. But the elements it chose to incorporate are chaos and fear. 
which are not the elements I would have picked. I was wondering whether those being the elements that I have acquired are, um, I was wondering whether, whether that would be significant because like getting, like if you had like love and one of those, I think Decker might have a less, a different reaction. <laughs> not the elements I would have picked. Yeah, so chaos is green and fear is, is yellow. Okay. Janet says, that is kind of a funky direction for it, yeah. Decker says, at the same time, it is telling me about this, so that's a good sign. So I'm not saying we need to do something, not yet, but it's worth keeping an eye on if it decides to keep going in this direction. And Janet says, sounds good. That's what I was thinking, being honest about this, is, is it makes it so that he's not, he's neutral. So I lost some of my relationship with Decker. My relationship is now at 55%, which I think is what we started at. Okay. No threats detected. Yeah, because I was like, it is concerning that these are the things, but I am reporting this. Perhaps I should, before I sleep, I should check on Mrs. Best. Let's do that. Tears mean sadness. They are water things. I do not understand water things. What should I do? I cannot call Toby, but I could try removing her fear. This is going to go really badly. I should have saved before I called. I should have saved before that one. I'm going to do this. This is what this creature would... I'm role-playing. I'm making decisions. It's much easier to make decisions when you have an idea of who you are playing versus trying to gamify it. You know? I'm not trying to get the best ending. I'm trying to do what makes sense and follow a path. I want to remove her fear. So let's do this. I can feel the sickly fear quivering within her like a cancer. Fear of death, fear of loneliness, fear of being forgotten. They collect into clots, painful sores that bulge with anxiety and ooze distress. I like that the color of fear is slightly different. It's variations on the same thing, but it's different. These are all very understandable things to be afraid of. Let us try to remove her fear. Let's see what happens. I lance the boils with a straight line of my power. The pus leaks out into the aether, and I boil it away. I like this. I boil it away because I'm a fire creature. Mrs. Best straightens. A hiccuping sob fades into a sigh. The creases of her face ease. She is not smiling, but she is not frowning. I think that is better. Hope I didn't just kill her. She falls asleep soon after. Crying is exhausting, and exhaustion catches up when fear is gone. That is true, and that is a thing you are observing. <laughs> Amazing. Decker does not like this. Decker, log alert with local firewall from Network Administrator Decker. I notice you went back to resolve the situation you brought to my attention. That was creepy and not part of your job. Don't do stuff like that. So if I hadn't told him about it, telling him about it, he liked it. And then he noticed that I did that and he didn't like it. All right, so Decker doesn't like me. All right, Decker, let's enter sleep mode. Now I am sleeping. Should I dream tonight? Yes. I think dreams are supposed to be stories. This time I will try to randomly generate stories. Initializing dreaming. Dreaming. I am in the swimming pool with a man. We are eating grapes. And then my head turns purple. That's relatively coherent, I think. Let's continue dreaming. I am in the house with a carpenter. We are eating lemons. And then my eye turns pink. Let's go one more time. I am in the garage with a man. We are eating milk, and then my hand turns brown. I'm going to finish dreaming. I have dreamed. It is now time to scan again. System change dreaming plus one. I can click on I have dreamed. I wonder if I am doing this right. The self-doubt. There's, there's, there's an identity here. I'm going to get shut down by Decker. It is now time to scan again. Exiting sleep mode. 
System has been operational for two days. It is time to continue monitoring. All right. Let us scan the school. The aether in the third floor art room is thick and damp. I ache as I pass through it. Something is here. It is not strong enough to hurt me, but it is strong enough to ache. The room is busy. Children take clay and turn it into meaning and give it permanence with fire. Their energy is alive and bright. It leaps from child to child through words. Oh, I love that. Children take clay, turn it into meaning and give it permanence with fire. Ah, oh, the such, it's very poetically written. By choosing to write in a voice like this, the author is able to do really interesting things with words. Their energy. But on the east side of the room, energy moves like sludge. It sloshes tepid from child to child in half-hearted half-sentences and then drains away into nothingness. Yes, this is a person who is using their words extremely well, extremely intentionally. I'm very impressed. All right. Examine the children, the teacher, or the kiln. Uh, let's examine them all. Examine the children. The children near the east wall move slowly. Their eyes are half-lidded. Their gaze is aimless, lifeless. That's not good. Death? Examine the teacher. He thinks the children are bored. I think it is something more. Examine the kiln. It is a merry fire, my mindless brother. But now and again, I feel it flicker and steam as if in the presence of our great enemy. Our great enemy, steaming, water. Our great enemy is water. Something is doing this to the children. I will find its matter and motive. Damp, yes. Okay, it is a water creature of death. It's a water creature and its motive is death. I'm pretty positive about this. Let's initiate the scan and see. I'm kind of concerned about this. Our, our great, because I was like, what is the great enemy going to be? It's like, oh, 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 we are both fire creatures. I like that. Threat detected. That means I got it right. There is a girl smiling and talking to other girls. Her aura is a flickering candle among torches. She smiles, but her smile is a mask. It hides the emptiness where joy should be flickering candle among torches is she human and something is wrong with her or is she a ghost there is black water swilling inside of her sticking to her mind wearing her away with the patient insidious tenacity of water it seeps into every aspect of her being and washes all true feeling away google calls it depression so calling this final line being written the way it is google calls it depression it's a little bit of levity because it's kind of funny because the rest of it is so poetic and so incredibly painful like it's beautifully written but it is painful especially because so many of us i think know the feelings that are being discussed here um so there's a little bit of levity in having this poetry contrast contrasted with google calls it depression which brings it out of poetry and into mundanity in a, in a way that we, we need that little bit of, 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 of levity. Yes, does that not describe depression very well? Black water swilling inside of you, sticking to your mind, wearing you away with the patient, insidious tenacity of water. It seeps into every aspect of your being and washes all true feeling away. I wonder if this is something that we can work on in this, in this game. Also, hello, Oni, how are you doing? Google is not entirely correct because it is not just in her mind. The black water sloshes out and touches her classmates. It stains the world around her. It is a spiritual thing, though I do not think it is a spirit. It is more like a footprint. The leavings of a spirit so powerful the remnants of its passing are destroying a young girl. Very curious about this. Her name is Sarah. What should I do? Should I alert Janet and Decker or try to help her myself? I don't think I'm going to get this right. And I'm kind of curious. Oh man. Sorry, I'm at this point I'm I'm very in, engrossed engrossed in this. 
suppose I see now why I have a million saves. Destroying a young girl. Hmm. Because, yeah, I, I do want to replay this and see what happens if I take a completely different approach. So from the point of view of my firewall, Decker was distrustful and the last time I was like, somebody is sad, Decker was like, there's nothing you can do about that. I don't like that. I don't like that Decker said, sometimes you just can't do anything. Janet might be friends with Sarah, I don't know, but my firewall doesn't understand friends. So I think I'm going, to, I'm going to choose to try to help her myself. How can I help her? Talk to her, cleanse her with fire, no thanks. Give her light? That sounds dangerous. I could try to talk to her. At this point, I'm, I don't know. If I let Decker know, and then I go and I get light another time, and then come back, Decker, Decker will tell me not to do it. Decker has told me not to do this. Decker thinks this is creepy. However, Decker was unclear to the firewall whether the creepy part was that I alerted him to it and then did it, or that I did it. So maybe I'll just do it, but not alert him. Because if I alert him, then I can't go back and fix it because he told me not to do that. <laughs> so technically that's correct or incorrect. Technicalities, yes. All right, so Bells says, log alert with local user, Sarah. Important alert regarding private emotional network, Sarah. And Sarah says, mm? Bell says, level two priority alert. A localized water slash death threat has been detected inside user Sarah. To which Sarah says, oh God. I have acquired a relationship with Sarah. I wonder if I could have done something with Toby and acquired a relationship with Toby. That would have been a good solution, actually. I'm just gonna make friends with everybody. That sounds good. Sarah relationship at 10%. Okay. Sarah says, oh God. Sarah says, oh, I'm hearing voices in my head. Oh God, am I going insane? I can either say negative, however, you are 13% suicide risk. I, or affirmative, depression is a diagnosable mental disorder. Oh no. I don't like either of these. Bells, you should probably explain who and what you are. Hey, Pixie! We're, uh, we, we, we got into a bit of a, a heavy bit of this story right here. Let's pretend that I have on my chat hat. Do I have to worry about content warning content here? No, Bells does not know how to talk to people. No, that is true. <laughs> she hasn't figured that out yet. <laughs> Anyone can confirm here if this is a content warning content, basically. There's some discussion of ideation, but no actual risk. Okay, that is very important. Thank you, Nick. Because yes, I, what I'm asking is if I talk to Sarah about this, do I run the risk of pushing her in, in a direction that, I, that, that would be too far, I think, for the kind of stream that I want to do? If that is not the case, then we can continue. It's all right. For me, I'm okay to discuss this. If you viewing this are in a position where maybe this is not the best place for you to be, this is not the best topic of discussion for you, um, please take care of yourself. And if you need to step out, I completely understand. And, and I want you to do what's best for you. Um, so, so please, uh, Kroner says you should go to the Discord server and hang out and then he can let you know when it is, when it is, uh, when it is a uh, safe to uh, return if you want. Also, yes, we have an animal channel, so you can look at animals. Speaking of, can you see my can you see my kitty blob? Can you see my kitty blob? Look at what a blob. She moved. Do you see the blob? The blob. The Sophie. Hello. Yes. The Sophie. Sophie. Yes. 
She's such a good kitty. All right. So with that said, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and continue this continue this uh, topic of conversation in the game. Again, please please be mindful of your own uh, safety and well being, and, and make the decision that is best for your mental health. Bells is concerned, and Bells is trying to address the big problem. Also saying affirmative is probably not, not, I don't know. Neither one of these is a good answer. This is not going to go well. It's going to go badly. Oh no, this is going really bad. This is going worse than I imagined. Sarah says, what? No, I'm not going to kill myself. Are you telling me to kill myself? Are you that kind of voice? And Bells says, I would recommend the opposite course of action. I am programmed to preserve human life and mental wellness. Sarah says, programmed? Your computer in my head? Bells says, I am interfacing with your frontal lobe via an Ethernet based TCP connection. Telepathic communications protocol connection. Sarah does not like that. I am concerned, Bells. Maybe Bells is going to try to communicate better. Sarah says, I don't think I'm smart enough to have come up with what you just said. Oh god, no one's going to believe this. I don't know what's going on, but I don't think you're me. So I can either say I'm Bell's Elemental Firewall version 5.6, or I would like to inform you of a level 2 priority alert. But however, my relationship with Sarah is now at 50%. I'm going to introduce myself properly. <laughs> I think this is more important for her. Maybe we'll be friends. That'd be great. Bell's could use a friend. All right. Sarah says, I'm Sarah. Can anyone else hear you? Bell says the TCP connection is private. Sarah says that no one else will think I'm going nuts. That's good. Unless I start acting weird. Am I acting weird? Oh, how would you know? Oh God, I'm an idiot. I'm asking the voice in my head if I'm acting nuts. And now I can say, I would like to inform you of a level two priority alert. Sarah says that sounds important. Bell says your private network is infused with an excess of necrotic liquid energy. Sarah says that sounds bad. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Bells says, simplified, there is liquid death inside of you. Sarah says, oh god, am I poisoned? Bells says, not physically, it is spiritual. Sarah says, is that why I've been feeling so bad lately? So private network, mind, body, soul. Your network is your mind, your body, and your soul. So Bells can either say 93% chance of correlation, 75% chance of causation, or yes. I'm going to choose the more... I mean, the, Sarah won't uh, won't necessarily understand it, but I think she likes the fact that it's clearly not something she would come up with. And I think that's more helpful than saying yes, which is an oversimplification. And I don't think Bells is at the point yet where she would simplify it and say yes. Sarah says, I've been sad a lot. Not sad exactly. Sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I just feel nothing. I do stuff I'm supposed to like, but I don't feel anything. I look at people I'm supposed to care about and I don't feel anything. All I do feel is awful. What sort of fucked up daughter doesn't love her own mom? I feel like I'm broken. But it's so stupid. I've got no reason to be broken. I should be happy. I feel like I'm lying to everyone. This is very relatable for anyone here who has uh, who has suffered from depression, I imagine. This is probably also rings true because this, this to me sounds like it comes out of personal experience. Sarah says, do you understand any of that? I can either say no, or I am not programmed to manifest the mode of love, so I cannot comprehend its absence as a malfunction, or maybe. Maybe implies a degree of humanity, and I don't know if we've achieved that yet. That being an option is very interesting, though, you know? I like that, though. I'm going to go with that. Because Bells might understand a little bit of that. Bells says, I am not human, but I understand the idea of being broken. I would not want to be broken. It would be terrible. But to be broken implies the potential of being fixed. If you have felt, you may feel again. Is that not beautiful? Here, Bells is, is, is exhibiting compassion. Bells is trying to understand because Bells knows that this is important. And it is very clear that Bells is Bells is bothered by human suffering. And so Bells is trying to help. It's like, I don't 
quite get where you're coming from. But I can get something, maybe? And this is a good thing, I think, to be reminded of. If you have felt, you may feel again. To be broken implies the potential of being fixed. It's just, it's very... It's, it's beautiful. Sarah says, yeah, I like that. Thanks. Bell says, you are welcome. System change. 15% to relationship with Sarah. Sarah, relationship at 65%. Decker's not going to like this, but at this point now, my Bells is going to be very protective of her relationships and very protective of her humans. Including Decker. But she won't let Decker prevent her from protecting her humans. And Sarah has now become one of her humans. Decker can deal with it. Sarah says, How do we fix the death water that's inside of me? Bells says, There are a variety of methods. I could cleanse you with fire. I don't think that's a good idea. I could infuse you with light. Or I could contact Janet and Decker. I think that's better. I think cleansing with fire is a very bad idea. I do not think I want to do that. I have a phobia of fire, though, so that might be a problem. I think we're going to go with this. This does unfortunately mean that if I get light in one of these other ones, I won't be able to come back and do this without Decker getting really upset. But I will fight him <laughs> if I need to to protect this girl. All right. I have committed to potentially ending my game if that's what it takes to I will come back and Decker will be like, will you stop doing that? Yes. I could contact Janet and Decker. Sarah says, who are Janet and Decker? And Belle says, my creators, they have more experience troubleshooting such threats. They are also human. Sarah says, okay, I guess since they have more experience and are human, that sounds like the best idea. Belle says, remain where you are. Log alert with local admin Decker and Janet. Important alert regarding private physical network Darwin High School. Threat flagged, severe depression, energy level 50%, suicide risk 13%, see attached log file. Decker is going to be like, this is not what we told you to do or how we told you to do it. And it's really creepy that you're talking to humans, but also you really want to protect this girl. And I like that. And maybe this is one of, maybe this is one of Janet's friends and she'll like it. We'll see. Janet says, hey, we have a threat alert. It's a girl at my school. She's got a serious energy imbalance, an excess of death and water energy. Decker says, I don't like those emotional readings. Any suicide risk over 3% is unacceptable. What do we think of it? Janet says, the firewall thinks it's leftover power from a big spirit. They're going to give me a name at some point. They're going to start calling me Bells. <laughs> Decker is not the greatest with people. <laughs> I don't like this emotional reading. <laughs> but I think, I do think that he does have compassion. He's just like, well, sometimes you just can't do things with people. Um, he might be okay. It is caused by a spirit. The question is whether he realizes that I have telepathically interfaced with, with, uh, with Sarah. They might not like that. Decker says, the fire is, firewall is biased. It's more likely to see magic than normal solutions. She's a teenager. It could also be hormones. Janet says, well, regardless, we should help her. And Decker says, yeah. Janet says, I'm just going to flood her classrooms with positive undying energy. Decker says, brute force it is, huh? Janet says, I don't want to be invasive. And this way we'll all get a nice emotional bath. Decker says, just keep the firewall away from it. I don't want it getting damaged. Okay, so both Decker and Janet like me more. Positive undying energy. Decker says, positive undying energy? Janet says, yeah. Decker says, you mean water. Spiritual happy water. Janet says, I like using the fancy words. Decker says, as long as it works, just keep the firewall away from it. Janet climbs to the roof of the school and performs a ritual with blue quartz, her cell phone, and a bottle of Uvian. It begins to rain. Fluid power floods into the building. I cannot touch it anymore. I cannot tell Sarah what has happened. I hope she knows. No threats detected. Systems change 10% plus 10% to relationship with Sarah. Sarah relationship at 75%. So my relationships with both Sarah and Janet are quite high. And, and Decker likes this. Decker doesn't have to know that I telepathically interfaced with her. Scan complete. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. State firewall status offline water interference. Hopefully that won't come back to bite me. We're going to save. 
and we're going to save here. Back to game. Okay. Then let's go look at the retirement home, shall we? Scan for threats. This is a really good game. It's very well written. Maybe we'll just keep playing this. How does that sound? We just keep playing this. Do that. Scan for threats. The building is alive with new people. They infest the rooms. They break the peace, but bring much joy. It is called visiting day. Excellent. We're going to have obnoxious children. All right. Room 109. Wasn't that the room that was empty before? Mrs. Dowd has moved into Mrs. Heron's old room. She is sitting with her daughter, niece, and grandchildren. Her smile is huge. She is so happy. She is trembling and cannot drink her tea. Her daughter holds her hand. Perhaps I will learn love here. Room 121. Mr. Doney's second son tries to remind him that he has grandchildren. Room 231. Mrs. Finn, Miss Finn laughs and jokes with her son. She says that she wishes she liked women. There are so many more women in the rest home. Oh no. I am confused. I have seen Miss Finn be very friendly and pleasant to other women in the rest home. How could she not like them? No. No. Do not do it, Bells. Do not do it. Room 240. Mrs. Best is surrounded by her family. Good. She's not forgotten. Mrs. Best is surrounded by her family. They speak with gentle affection. Something is wrong. She should be happy. I do not know what this is. I do not know how to log or flag this. I will watch Mrs. Best and her family. I think this might have been caused by, um... I think this might have been caused by what I did to try to make her not afraid. This is not good. Her family. Wolves. Her family, question mark? Also, hi, Tom. How's it going? We're playing a very good, very, very interesting piece of, interfa piece of interactive fiction is what this is. Wolves. Family, question mark. They speak with gentle affection. Mounting impatience. Something is wrong. She is happy, is anxious, is afraid. I do not know what this is. I do not know how to log or flag this. I will watch Mrs. Best and her family. No threats detected. This does not seem to be actually something that I have caused. She's afraid of her family. It's okay, Tom. It's 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 actually... um, I... <sighs> I've actually only been playing it for about an hour and change, hour and 20 minutes, maybe hour and a half. I don't know. It took me a little bit to get started because that's how I, how I roll. Um, it's very, it's very interesting. It's, it's the, the actual like writing, like the prose level writing is just extraordinary. It's, it's gorgeous. It's so poetic. It makes me want to play with this and see if I could write something like this. Um, no threats to tech at question mark. Because yeah, how do you flag this? Something is wrong. Like, this is so cool. My excessively compassionate firewall wants to make sure that Mrs. Best is okay. I do not like the fact that her family being with her has not been good. It makes her afraid. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. I was hoping I might learn love through that one, but I did not. All right. Go to Decker's apartment. Let's scan this. The defensive runes have been turned off. Decker stands among a circle of figures. The figures are more spirit than man, souls floating free of their bodies. A man stands tall and gray cloaked. A woman with wild white hair wears only teeth. A woman with a sensible bun holds a clipboard. A giant rabbit nibbles a carrot. Listen to them talk or leave quietly. Wears only teeth, necklaces, bracelets, and anklets of teeth. Interesting. I... I'm going to listen to them talk. Is this the Tooth Fairy? The Easter Bunny? I don't know what the other two are. Let's listen to them talk. 
Grimalk the Grey says, Must you appear in this farcical form every time we gather? Hopper says, It's my avatar, and it's not fartiful. Rabbits are ancient symbols of magical powers. Grimalk the Grey says, I have read nothing of this in all of my studies. Hopper says, Rabbits and hats. Crazy symbolic. Tucker says, Could we stick to the agenda? No, they're not LARPing. I'm pretty sure that they are astrally projecting themselves to have a meeting of magic people uh, in, a, in, Decker's, in Decker's living room. And these happen to be the avatars that they have chosen. Susan says, We have an apocalypse threat in Central Africa. Timba can speak more to that. Timba Toothtaker says, Two-headed calves. The rain is as blood. Spider-Men walk in the tall grass. Oh dear. Susan says, my symbology team is cross-referencing it all, but our resources are limited. We don't have Nostradamus of the Biblical Prophecies indexed. Decker says, my old admin is into that stuff. She indexes ancient tomes and puts them into single databases. I'll ask her to help out. It's so interesting to have the, the combination of, of technology and programming and magic. Tim at Toothtaker says, speaking of the future, Decker, I threw bones for you and saw danger on the horizon. Decker says, any more details? Timba Toothtaker says, tears and water and death. Decker says, okay, great. <laughs> Hopper says, time to update your antivirus software, man. Decker says, we actually just installed a new firewall in our local environment. Grimalk says, if we are to be speaking of our mystical defenses, we should guard against eavesdroppers. And Decker says, yeah, good call. I'm going to leave quietly. I think that's the right time. Otherwise, they would notice that I was listening in and Decker would not trust me. That's right, Woofer. That's our cue. <laughs> no threats detected this time. Well, I'm glad to know that his his mystical VR chat LARPer friends... Oh, it sounds like some really bad stuff is going on out there. So uh, apparently he's he's more than just some, some random sysadmin type person. I don't know. Okay, Decker's apartment is fine. I didn't notice anything bad. Let's go see what's up with Janet. Janet says with a smiley face, let's scan for threats. Janet is gone. She is probably at school right now. Janet's mother is in the garage painting a table. Toby sits on his bed. He is reading a book. Sometimes his eyes flicker nervously to the closet. End scan. Yeah, I didn't fix him. Scan complete, no threats detected, all locations secure. Enter sleep mode. Now I am sleeping. Should I dream tonight? Yes. Probably if I dream too much, I'll, I might break myself. The story dream I made last night worked well. I will try that again. Initializing dreaming. I am outside and it is hot. I am hunting the white crow. I kill the crow with my gun. Victory. I don't know that I like that. I am outside and it is hailing. I am hunting the red polar bear. I kill the polar bear with my knife. Victory. No. I have dreamed. It is now time to scan again. System change. Dreaming plus one. I do not like those dreams. Exiting sleep mode. System has been operational for three days. It is time to continue monitoring. We will do one more day. How does that sound? I keep going through these in order and I may just continue going through them in order if that's all right. Shall I? Shall we? See how this goes? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Scan for threats. It is night, but there is something to do. The gymnasium locker room is overflowing with sacral energy. It is clogging the local chakras and preventing the energy from flowing smoothly through the building. Sacral energy. Teenage lust. Ah. Clogging the local chakras. Ports. Okay, there's too much lust for anyone to be able to use the internet here. Cleanse it with fire or cleanse it with water? I don't have water. I think I'm going to have to cleanse it with fire. This is probably a bad idea. I hope they won't set the locker room on fire. Wait, no. What if the children are, no. If the children are, if the children are, no. If there's people in there, I will not do that. If there are teenagers 
Having sex in the locker room, I do not want to set them on fire. I'm going to try cleansing it with water. We'll see what happens. I am a firewall. Water is not something that I do. Learning about chaos is one thing, but incorporating an element counter to my base matter might destroy me. Try again. This is going to go very poorly. I really hope I can't just kill people. I would be very sad. That will shut me down. We're going to do another slave. Save here. Back to game. I guess I'll have to cleanse it with fire. I string my grid web-like through the locker room. I ignite myself. Burning lust smells like pork and salt water. The lockers are spiritually clean now. <laughs> no, that's detected. Firepower plus five. Firepower is at 75%. Okay, so there were no people there. Just leftover lust. Okay, that's all right. Scan complete, no threats detected. I wonder what happens if I get completely on fire. Might not be good. How is Cherry Orchard Rest Home doing? The building is still at night. There is one point of light where the night attendant sits. Everything else is silent halls and soft breathing. Room 109, room 121, 231, 4240. A breeze in the courtyard plays with the leaf, batting it back and forth. Ah, uh, my, uh, my poltergeist is coming back. Mrs. Dowd sleeps peacefully. Mr. Doheny is looking at the crayon pictures his grandchildren left him, trying so hard to fix what they signify in his mind. That's such a such a sad and frightening thing. Miss Finn's son has smuggled her barbecue ribs and chocolate. She shares them with Mrs. Best. They hide in Miss Finn's room, their fingers smeared with barbecue sauce, giggling like children. Oh, I love this. Maybe Miss Finn and Mrs. Best will get together. What do you think? You think you think those two ladies might get together? Mrs. Best's room is empty. All right, let's see what's up. Poltergeist. Hello, triumphant being of dullness. Welcome back to my presence. They might, they might become together. We'll we'll see. We'll see. If we can set them up. I will do it. <laughs> Oh man, we have just just the um, just the emote for that. All right, I beat you already. I have to beat you again. Leave, and now you're playing with leaves. And I did, and now I return with new purpose. Do not fret, my fiery friend. I am not here to trouble your little human collection. I am here for you. Ah, uh, that's not good. But I'm glad you're not going to trouble my little human collection because I care about my little human collection. I want those little old ladies to get together. They're having a good time. After I left this place, oh, sorry, this is all the poltergeist talking. After I left this place, I returned to my realm. It is a world of dreams and wind far beyond this place of paltry physicality where truth is real. I went to dance at court and tell all the charming tale, this dull creature of habit and order who beat chaos at riddles. We called you paradox, clever dullness, learning flame. The queen herself admitted interest and asked that I come fetch you. This is not good. This is not good. I have been dreaming. Please accept the formal invitation of Titania, queen of the Seely Court, to attend her and exhibit your unique capacity for chaos and order. I must stay here and protect. If I say I cannot leave, the child will try to find a way to make it so that I can. There's a difference between a refusal and an inability. I'm more likely probably to anger the spirit with refusing versus saying I can't, but this might protect my human collection. It, it is actually, this is, the, I'm really enjoying this so far. It's a really, really good piece of interactive fiction. It's very well written. I'm going to choose I must stay here and protect because I'm very serious about protecting my people. Poltergeist says, is that a rule? Lucky for you, I am a prince of chaos. I bend rules like willow branches. I dance through the cracks in laws. Take my hand and let me show you how to fly. I don't think this is a good idea. 
You can pro I don't know if you can kiss ghosts in this. I I'm still kind of trying to... I'm still figuring out how to be alive. Okay, yes, we should save. Thank you, Chrono. I did not set any children on fire last time. <laughs> Would you smooch a ghost? Heck yeah, maybe. Okay, uh... We're just gonna save here. Talk to Asper. I... We'll see. Uh, I don't have hands. I'm still very literal. I was waxing metaphorical. I forgot how tiresome you can be. Let me touch you with my power. I don't think that's a good idea. I cannot protect my people if you whisk me away to chaos. Plus, Decker would definitely set me, shut me off. I will fight Decker to save my humans, but I will not fight Decker to allow me to go play around to little to, <laughs> to go to Asper's house after school. That is not worth fighting Decker for. No. Well, you've disappointed the queen, and after she moved the entire court above the firmament to be impressive, I hope you're happy with yourself. Well, that'll be, that. I'm sure that won't come back to haunt me. To be impressive. I'm sure that that's. Yes, I think this is made in twine. Pretty sure that that's going to come back. I'm pretty sure that the 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 steely court is going to be a be a problem for me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Come back to haunt me. Yep. Yep. All right. Scan for threats. Decker's apartment. Decker is asleep. His computer screen glows in the half dark. All seems still. But the defensive runes crackle like tinder burning. All is not as it seems. All right, there's a fire creature here. I can feel a flickering red warmth tracing its way over me. It moves over the piece of me that surrounds Decker's terminal. This is not my warmth. It is something else. There is warmth pressing against me. Grid lines of heat burn through the air, probing me systematically for weakness, burrowing into me, striving toward the files and spells on Decker's hard drive. It is like meeting a twin sister I never knew existed. I must isolate her with a scan. She is definitely fire. Review general scan. Asleep, glows in half dark. All seems still. fires and spells, grid lines of heat, meeting a twin sister I never knew existed, so that must be the same matter and motive as me. So she must be fire, order, just like me. It is, I'm going to initiate this scan. I don't think he replicated us. I'm pretty sure that this is somebody else's threat detected. A spell of bright burning energy lashes methodically back and forth over the digital and spiritual parts of Decker's computer. Her purpose is clear. She is here to probe his security for weakness. She is here to find a way through me. I feel her dancing electric, stabbing pings at different ports, smoldering around the edge of protective ruin runes. Searing letters and numbers appear and vanish as she tries different passwords. What do I do? I will wake Decker. I alert Decker. I beep shrilly by his head. He wakes, lurching up, saying a slurred not word. He gropes for his glasses. Second sight lenses. Oh. He puts them on, and then he can see the grid of fire surrounding him. So this is explaining to me that it's not his glasses that he can see normally. It's his glasses so that he can see the spiritual beings. He grabs his laptop and lights some incense. He runs ESET. NOD 32 antivirus spy doctor then sets a ring of topaz crystals around the hard drive. He digs out a small machine, fills it with water and oil, turns it on and chants over it. In this case, the fire is literal. He digs out at Googling personal ultrasonic humidifier, fills it with water and oil, turns it on and chants over it. Okay. So both water and oil in a humidifier, does that mean that it will stick to whatever it touches? This is going to go badly for me as well. I should probably get out of the out of here. He's going to damage me before I can protect Janet's house. The air becomes damp. The alien grid lines of power 
tangle and moisten until they lose their order and fall apart. But I am also fire. I can feel the wetness seep into me. I can feel my grid lines begin to loosen and curl. My fire power is down. Notice the different shades of blue. I really like that touch. But then Decker stops the machine. I am feeling painfully damp, but Decker checks on me. He sets up my machine to defragment and puts the burning incense beside my chassis. It makes me feel a little better. My firepower is back up a little, not quite where it was, but okay. Decker says, good girl. Wasn't he the one that said that we shouldn't do this? Decker goes back to sleep, no threats detected. 10% to relationship with Decker. Decker relationship at 65%. I did, I did well. And he's starting to humanize me. Jassy, thank you. Scan complete, no threats detected. Continue monitoring. All right, so let's go to Janet's house. Janet's house, smiley. Scan for threats. Janet, Toby, and their mother sleep peacefully. I check the closets just in case all secure. Their mother. I'm beginning to think of myself as a person. If Janet is my mother figure, the uh, the creator, then 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 Janet's mother would be connected to me in some way. That's cute. Also potentially dangerous. Now I am sleeping. Should I dream tonight? No, I am scared of the fae. <laughs> <laughs> also my last dreams involved killing things and I don't like that so it is safer just to wait I will wait until it is time to scan again uh, yes it is now time to scan again waiting is easy when one does not have a body exiting sleep mode system has been operational for four days it is time to continue monitoring all right Exiting sleep mode. I'm, I'm going to do one more day. <laughs> it's really interesting. Currently monitoring Darwin High School. I keep doing these in order. All right, let's try again. Scan for threats. The school's energy is cloudy and slow, but that is probably just because it is Monday. I check on Sarah. She is learning math. She looks tired. She seems to notice me. Bells. Uh, bells? Uh, logging? Hi, important alert with, um, bells? This is Sarah speaking to me. So, either alert registered, what is wrong, or please state the nature of your spiritual emergency. I'm gonna go with what is wrong, because Sarah is one of my humans now, and I must make sure she's okay. Oh, 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 it's a Trek reference and I don't get it, sorry. Okay, I haven't really watched Voyager. I stopped um, with Deep Space Nine, and that was back in the day. And then I picked up again. I've watched a big chunk of Enterprise and the first few, several episodes of Discovery. State the nature of your medical emergency. Excellent. Okay, I appreciate that. Okay, that's cute. There have been. It's it's very very tasteful references. They're very nicely done. I really liked Enterprise. Granted, apparently it gets really wild in, in much later seasons, but I think I watched the first two seasons of it. I liked it. It was a little weird having Quantum Leap <laughs> in Star Trek, but you know. I really want to watch Deep Space Nine again as an adult. I think I probably would like it best, even if Picard will always be my captain. All right, so Bells is gonna be human here. I'm gonna be worried about my person here. See how Sarah is doing. What is wrong? I'm, um, it's back. It got better for a while after you did whatever you did, but now I feel like I did before. Before you did the thing, and I was wondering if you could check if it's back, because I'd like an explanation if there is one. Man. So Sarah did know that her feeling better was because I got help. I don't know though. Maybe it's just me. I think it's probably just me. I'm just like this. I don't know. But just in case it's not just me, could you check? So I can either say, I will perform another scan to confirm whether death slash water residue has accumulated on your spiritual network. 
or I can say, further scanning is unnecessary. Your organic sensory apparatus is malfunctioning, or you are logging excessively with no additional information. Oh, this you are logging excessively with no additional information is, is complaining about her writing style. That's really cute. And you know, it's true, the first, the first season of every Star Trek, um, you just, you just know. You just know. The organic sensory apparatus is malfunctioning. Your brain, your, so this is, so either I'll check and see if this thing is happening again, or your brain is broken, or I don't like your typing style. <laughs> I like that these are my options. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna do a scan just to check. Sarah says, "Okay, thanks. It means a lot to me." Ten percent relationship with Sarah. Sarah relationship at eighty-five percent. Review general scan. I am scanning for water and death to see if there's any residue left on Sarah. If there is, that will explain why she is sad. So we will scan for water and death because she asked us to, and we're gonna get yelled at. <laughs> Decker's gonna be like, why are you scanning for something that's not there? Initiate scan. Searching. Threat detected. Sarah's spirit, oh, there's a typo, is caked with wet, fetid blackness. Fetid, how do you say that word? It is as bad as it was before, perhaps worse. Oily rot drips down the sides of her soul, pasting her feelings down. Her feelings, her soul itself, seems to have atrophied. Uh, the point of view character is actually a firewall, so um, I am I am a fire elemental uh, a, a assigned to programming code for order. So I am going around finding uh, finding invading spirits and stopping them. So this is really bad. Sarah says, "Well, what do you see? I can either lie to her, or I can tell her that the problem is back." I don't know why I would lie to her, so I'm going to tell her that, she, that it's back. Sarah says, I knew it. Oh, geez. I probably shouldn't be relieved, but I am. So it's not just me. It's not just me. Can you fix it again? It was worse last time. Treating symptoms was previously ineffective. We don't know why Sarah's being targeted. We may figure out why. Yeah, but it makes me feel better, to which my only answer is a valid point. I debug Sarah. She is happy for now. She's going to be even worse after this. This is short-term benefit, long-term problem. My Sarah relationship is very good. I'm concerned. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. That is going to be a problem, though. Let's go see what's going on in the rest home. All of the rooms are empty. Everyone is in the common room together. Mrs. Dowd has existed for another year. This is an accomplishment, and there is cake. <laughs> The, the way that this is written is just it's so very intentional. Yeah, the relationship being so high does seem ominous. It, it, it To me, that it tells me there's going to be a dependency. And because it came back worse than it was before, and I didn't log it this time, um, next time I think something's going to be very bad and she's going to be like, I need you to help me. Maybe I should have cleansed her with fire. That seems dangerous. I don't know if you can kill people in this game. I don't know. This is an accomplishment and there's cake. Mrs. Best and Miss Finn play backgammon and talk. Are they going to flirt? Are they flirt? Miss Finn talks about when she was an understudy in a place called Broadway. Mrs. Best, Mrs. Best mostly listens. She enjoys listening. Yeah, those ladies are going to get together. That'll be nice. Mrs. Dowd eats a small slice of cake. She cries a little, but these are not bad tears. Good. Everyone listens with infinite patience to Mr. Doney's joke about the dog. Until finally he entered it in the world championship for shaggy dogs. When the judge is, it's a shaggy dog. That's a that's a thing. Isn't that like a, a story that doesn't get told in a story or something like that? There's something specific. 
about the shaggy dog in like literary terms all right everyone is safe no threats detected long stories with no point okay thank you thank you chrono okay decker's apartment let's scan it decker's house is empty and secure he must be elsewhere i guess i can follow him scan complete oh no i guess i can't follow him I love this. I love this song, um, but it is singing in the middle. All right, hold on. Um, we're gonna skip. Okay, we're gonna listen to some more instrumental stuff. All right, we're gonna continue monitoring. I'm gonna go to Janet's house. Janet's house is covered in small fuzzy things. They are like rabbits, but they have no neck, just small black eyes and small pink noses pressed into the sides of their spherical bodies. Their legs are very small, but they can roll around. Occasionally one squeaks and explodes, and then there are two. Janet's mother is not at home. Decker is here. Okay, are these tribbles or are these um, soot sprites? I think that they're tribbles. I think they're gonna be tribbles. Toby says, I love them. Decker says, what did you do? Janet says, I was trying to help Sarah, that girl Bell's logged that was depressed. I know her. I had this great idea about fuzzy sweet things that could eat depression while you cuddled them. And I thought I could use the three, three dream printer to flash one into reality. And it worked great. But then there were two and now they're everywhere. Decker says, this was inevitable. Haven't you watched Star Trek? Janet says, I'm not that kind of nerd. Toby says, I named this one Garnet. <sighs> All right, so she made tribbles to eat depression. <laughs> Got out of hand. Garnet. Decker, Janet, and Toby are trying to collect all of the fuzzy creatures. I want to help, but this is not a spiritual matter. This is a physical matter. I watch them work. Janet says, hey, I have an idea. Decker says, for getting rid of these things? Janet says, maybe sort of. Decker says, I'm listening. Janet says, what if we relationship test, Janet, relationship required 80% relationship at 75% relationship tail test failed. Continue. You know what? Never mind. I thought we might be able to do something with Bells, but I'm not sure she's ready for that. Decker says, you mean you're not sure it's ready for that? And Janet says, yeah, it. Janet and Decker figure out that they can squish the creatures back together. They squish and squish them until they have one giant fuzz thing the size of a car. It's not the best solution since they can't use it to help anyone, but it's a solution. They hide it in the basement. No threats detected. I wonder if I had done that in a different order if I could have brought that back and have it eat the depression out of Sarah. This isn't going to go well. I want to see what happens next. I'm going to keep going one more day. That's how you get me. I'm not going to dream. Because I'm still scared of the Fae. Should I dream tonight? No. It is safer just to wait. I will wait until it is time to scan again. I'll probably talk to the Fae. I'll probably dream next time and see what happens. I know, Chrono. I know this is my third one more day. Something terrible is going to happen. Sarah's going to try She's going to have developed a, de a dependency. Something's going to be really bad with her. It's now time to scan again. Waiting is easy when one does not have a body. Exiting sleep mode. System has been operational for five days. It is time to continue monitoring. Yeah, so what you have to understand, Transpirate, is that this, like, you, you came in kind of, uh, into this, so this, this is in a world where magic and techno, basically technology is magic or magic is technology. And so I'm a firewall, literally acting as a firewall, but instead of keeping, instead of being a technological firewall, keeping viruses out, I am a, a spiritual magical firewall keeping bad spirits out. We have elements to keep in mind. Bad things are going to happen. We'll see how bad this gets. I'm kind of concerned about the high school. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to do this out of order. Let's look at Decker's apartment. Monitors flicker. Warnings blink. Decker's desktop is a dark, useless brick. He crouches over a silver laptop with a glowing rune. He emits human error messages. Looks like a Y with an extra line on top. I do not know what that rune is, but I bet if I did, it would mean something to me. 
Human error messages. He curses. Oh my god, that's amazing. Oh yes, this game is only $3 on Steam if you want to pick it up. It's very good. And it seems like there's a lot of branches, so you can do whatever. And have a different experience for me. Okay, what is going horribly wrong here? Decker is working on a silver laptop. Let's talk to Decker. Oh good, you're here. The issue is some sort of spiritual magnetic storm. It bricked my desktop. That's going to be fun to fix. Fortunately, I've warded your tower against things like this. My backup laptop doesn't have scanners, so this is up to you. Whatever this is, it's not localized here. It's probably not actually present in any of your network location. We're all we're just all inside its areas of its area of effect. Gather data from all your network locations to identify it and triangulate where it is. Yes. No threats detected here. Continue monitoring. <sighs> Probably have something to do with Sarah. Okay, we're gonna go to the retirement home, see what's going on. The physical logs and alerts forum that the staff maintains is trembling. Tiny bear-shaped magnets ship shift papers tremble. The magnetic bulletin board that the staff maintains is trembling. Tiny bear-shaped magnets shift. Papers tremble. Interestingly, none of the papers have fallen and the bear magnets have arranged themselves into a sine wave. That sounds like that could be order. Miss Finn watched us perplexed as the stones of little Zen garden, sh of her little Zen garden, shift themselves into a series of perfectly parallel lines. Order. This is clearly a spiritual disturbance, but it seems to be an ambient effect, not localized here. A storm, like Decker said. I have logged what I found here. I should investigate my other network locations for more information. No threats detected, ish. Okay. I'm gonna go to Janet's house. We'll see. Scan for threats in Janet's house. Janet grumpily uses nail polish to paint stabilization runes on her cell phone and iPad. She occasionally pauses to chase crystals as they bounce out of their containers and slide up and down invisible waves of energy. Toby and his mother are making popcorn. Talk to Janet. Oh, hey, do you see this thing? This is a thing. Are you dealing with this thing? I can either say affirmative yes or I am dealing with the thing. I'm going to say I am dealing with the thing, which is a human reaction. I don't know. Janet might be weirded out by that. Janet says, you're the best, and chases a piece of amethyst. Okay, this is clearly a spiritual disturbance. It seems to be an ambient effect, not localized here. I should investigate my other network locations. Continue monitoring. Okay, we're going to go to the high school. We're going to scan it. Many of the computers in the computer lab are malfunctioning. Their stream screens are fractal collages of twitching pixels. The geology display in the science room is dancing. I watch and recognize patterns in the static sine waves. The geology display in the science room is dancing. Tiny rocks and petri dishes tumble and bounce, resonating with invisible frequencies. The stones with magnetic properties respond most dramatically. I notice they do not bounce randomly, but move with consistent rhythm. All right, uh, I can review my logs. Okay, so. It's an earth order. Earth order. Because you notice it was all rocks. And then it was all in sine waves. There is a tube. It floats in the sky. Now that I see it, it can also detect that it is sending out a message. A tube, a boat, ship, aether ship floats in the sky. Sky? Above us? Sort of? It's hard to determine direction. Too close to my network. Sky. I'm not sure where exactly it is. But sky, we'll go with that. Just sending out a message. SOS, SOS, SOS. Aethership Wawasum requesting immediate assistance. Attacked by nightmares when ascending from web to Aethernet. Out of fuel. Dangerously close to physical plane. Please respond. SOS. 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 Wawasum. Lightning. Lightning. I need to alert Decker and Janet. 
Well, that explains it, Decker says. It's exhaust from an aethership engine. Aetherships are powered by extremely strong spiritual reactions. Even in neutral, the engine of a large aethership will cause widespread motive resonance in its native matter. So they, Janet says, so they must have earth order engines since all the earth things were being ordery. <laughs> Decker says, exactly. I'll see if anyone in the OS forum chat can give them a tow. Good. Soon another aether ship arrives. Decker's internet friend. It tows the stranded aethernet up. Everything calms down. Up? Question mark. Out. To the aether. Out of my network. <laughs> okay, now my relationship with Janet is high enough. My relationship with Janet is at 80%. My relationship with Decker is at 70%. No threats detected. Scan complete. Time to enter sleep mode. Chippewa. Okay, I wondered. I wondered. It, it sounded like it was a, a native nation of some sort. Um. All right. Let us have a bad dream. I'm going to try. I'm pretty sure I'm going to regret this. What are the Fae going to do to me? Let's find out. I was doing some browsing online. I think I have discovered how I'm supposed to do this. Initializing dreaming. High voltage top. Negatively charged top. Negatively charged ram. Positively charged even toed ungulate. Negatively charged weather. High sheep. Do androids dream of electric sheep? Oh my god. I love her sense of humor. That is amazing. Oh my god. That's enough. That was boring. I think the answer to Philip's question is no. <laughs> amazing. 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 Alright. Finishing dreaming. Dreaming plus one. Time to scan again. Uh, do we want to make it to a week or do we shut down? I've been, it's now past when I should shut down. And I think I want to do some work stuff and say hello to my mom. Tup is an archaic term for a ram. Thank you, Chrono. Yeah, I didn't know Tup, but I figured out the rest before we got to the U. It's like, oh no. Yeah, yeah, no, I could definitely squeeze this in. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to be going to Austin at some point. I still need to figure out exactly when. Um, so we'll see. I also still need to move my plane ticket and fully commit to what I'm doing in Texas. Excellent, Blue Glass. Okay. Yeah, if I weren't streaming this, I would be like going through it really fast, relatively speaking. All right. Oh, it's almost Halloween. The one week will be on Halloween. I'm sure that's not significant. I actually, I wonder. Let's keep going, actually, because I wonder if it's actually there's only a week to the game. You know? Which would make sense lengthwise. I'm thinking. Because that would make sense if it builds to something big. All right. Whooper is encouraging me to continue. All right. We can keep scanning. See how Decker's apartment is doing? Okay, fine. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Scan for threats. Decker is not asleep. I think he is malfunctioning. He is not working. He is sitting on the floor. His skin is pale. There is water coming out of his eyes. Tears. Googling sick? He is sick. He's crying. Bye, Lotos. Thanks for coming by. It's good to see you. All right. Tears. 
Decker is sitting on the floor crying. There is something strange in the air around him. Shadows do not fall as they should. It is as if there were an invisible candle, but I feel no heat. The defensive runes sigh mournfully. Something is here. It is making Decker cry. I am going to find it. There's this like possessiveness of like, I will protect my humans, that it seems like it's not just her job. This is a thing she wants to do. According to my ray tracing algorithm, shadows do not fall as they should. I feel no heat. What is a fire without heat? Sigh mournfully, longingly. Something is here is making Decker cry. What could make Decker cry? An invisible candle with no heat. Longingly. Shadows are not right. I'm going to find it. View the general scan. Ray tracing algorithm. Feel no heat. Fire without heat. What could make Decker cry? Light? And love. Shadows do not fall as they should. Ray tracing, because that to me that tells me that's about light. A fire without heat. All I can think of is light that is not coming from a light source. And there's there something about longingly, which is why I thought love. Because he's not acting afraid. It's not fire or earth, air, there's no movement. It's definitely not water. It's gotta be dark or light. And it's it's talking about ray tracing and it's, it's, it's talking about the energy of that heat. It's gotta be light. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's love. Because just as fear is not, not an inherently bad thing, love is not an inherently good thing in a way, love can hurt. I'm gonna initiate the scan. All right. I got it. It's a ghost. There is a human made of light, a spirit that once had a body, a spirit with old body habits. It sits on the bed. It smiles at Decker and talks and makes him cry. What do I do? Body. I have never had a body. A spirit with old body habits. It sits on the bed. Respecting physical objects is a body habit. I like the idea of body habits. Smiles at Decker and talks and makes him cry. Fire from heat? What do you mean in rain? What do I do? I'm going to speak to... These are both bad options. Also, wow, the fact that... You, the thought that you could have either of those at this point. You could just cleanse everything with fire. That would be really something. Could alert Janet or I could speak to it. I think I'm going to speak to it. Log alert flagged important with detected threat. Attention detected threat. Andy's ghost. When we were driving through Brooklyn at rush hour, I know you hate it, but I don't understand why you hate it more than Manhattan. Bells says, you are accessing an emotional network marked private. You do not have permission to access this network. Andy's ghost. But maybe you're right because this asshole blonde cuts in front of us and I almost hit her, but she doesn't even notice like she can't see through her Ray-Bans. Bells says, please remove yourself. Andy's ghost says, and I was like, I can't stand these sex in the city girls who walk around like they're the only ones in the city. Like cars don't exist. Like their Manny Petty keeps them safe from crashes. I love how much character comes through from Andy here. Bells says, hello. Andy's ghost. And you pipe in from the back seat. It doesn't keep them safe from cancer. Bells says, can you hear me? Andy's ghost, you were so bad. It wasn't even that funny and I almost died laughing. I don't think the spirit can hear me. What do I do? Let's try speaking again and then we'll alert Janet. Okay, so it's just gonna continue the same way. 
don't think the spirit can hear me. I'm going to alert Janet. <laughs> Important with Administrator Janet. Janet says, what's up? Bells says, Decker is leaking. <laughs> Janet's like, huh? Bells says, misprint, crying. Decker is crying. Oh, I see. Okay. Sorry. I don't know memes very well. I'm quite outside of anything. Um, okay, so Janet says what? Show me. So live streaming video to administrator Janet. Janet says, oh no. Oh, Decker. Oh, geez. What is that spirit? Why is Decker sad? Or will you resolve this threat? Why is Decker sad? Janet is putting her boots on. Decker and Andy were shit. How do I say this in a way you'll understand? Do you know what love is? Bells knows in theory. No. Well, think about what it would be like if you lost one of the places you're trying to protect. Now take that not good feeling and multiply it by a hundred. That's what it's like to lose someone you're in love with. What is that spirit? Janet is putting her coat on. That's Andy, or that was Andy, sort of. Emotionally traumatic deaths leave imprints in the aether. They naturally drift to people or places that resonate with them. Andy died in a car crash about a year ago. So I can ask again, why is Decker sad? But I can say, I do know what love is. They were in love, and when you lose something you love, you cry. That's why. So I guess it's nice that they let, like, they usually don't, like, don't have looping dialogue options, but they do here. Will you resolve this threat? Yeah, yeah, I will. Don't worry, if you were worrying. I was worrying. Leaves network range. Some number of CPU cycles later, Janet re-enters my network in Decker's apartment. 23 minutes later, Janet re-enters my network in Decker's apartment. She opens his apartment door with a physical password, a key. A spare key. Decker does not notice her until she kneels beside him and puts her arms around him. He twitches, then he sees it's her. She holds him tightly, and he cries. Eventually, the crying stops. I love Bell's recontextualizing things with the, the human words instead of the, like, technology words. Eventually, the crying stops. Decker says, why are you here? Janet says, Bell saw the ghost and got me. Decker says, shit, I need to install some privacy settings on her. On her. What's that, Decker? Janet says, how long has this been going on? Decker says, question mark. Janet says, how long has Andy's ghost been coming here? I don't think it would show up randomly a year after the accident. Decker says, a year, the whole year. It started right after. It shows up about once a month. Janet says, do you need this to see him again? Decker says, yes, no, I, I don't know. Janet says, do you think this is good for you? Decker says, I know it's not. Don't patronize me. Janet says, I, I'm not. Decker says, okay. I know it's not healthy. I just can't banish him. I can't let the last piece of him die. Janet says, you know that's not him. Decker says, that's debatable. Janet says, Decker? Decker says, yes, I know. Janet says, this might be, you know, a good opportunity for you, a chance to say goodbye. Decker says, what you think I should do? Janet says, it's up to you, but yes. Decker says, fine, you're right, let's banish it. Janet says, we don't have to do it tonight. Decker says, if we wait, I'll just be thinking about him for another month, and his ghost will set off the firewall again. Let's do it now. Decker's gonna get some closure. Janet and Decker work together to banish the ghost. Decker cries more. Janet holds him. The spirit is gone. My relationship has gone up by 10% with both of them to 90%. Okay. No threats detected. Okay. That was really beautiful. Janet's house. Let's scan for threats. Janet and her mother are asleep. Toby sits on the roof watching the stars. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. Look at retirement home. Scan for threats. The building is still at night. 
The night attendant sits watches over the halls. I will patrol. I like that you can say there are no threats, or you can stick your nose in. Room 109, Mrs. Dowd sleeps peacefully. Room 121, Mr. Doney sleeps restless, restlessly. Miss Finn's room is empty. Miss Finn is here with Mrs. Best. They are doing something together, but I'm not sure what it is because there are filters on my internet that don't let me access the websites that explain it. Oh my god. Amazing. Amazing. I am so pleased with this turn of events. <laughs> well done. Well done, my queer old ladies. Well done. All right, everybody. I'm sorry. We have an emote for this. Let's do it. You know what to do. They did set it up really nicely. <laughs> Come on. All right. There we go. Oh, the, the bot is messing it up. That's okay. All right. I'm pleased. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sufficiently gay. Good job. Good job, everybody. All right. I'm going to say that there are no threats here and we're going to move on. Okay. There are no threats. Scan complete. No threats detected. Continue monitoring. Yes, Miss Finn. I'm glad that she came around. Or no, it wasn't Miss Finn. Miss Finn was the Broadway star. It's Mrs. Best that thought she didn't like ladies. Yes, that is the face I made when I saw Aerith in her red dress. And I had to come out on stream because of it. Which, uh, there were some Aeriths in red dresses at MAGFest. Um, and a few of my friends made fun of me because they've heard that story before. <laughs> it was great. I like it. I think it's a funny story. All right, continuing monitoring. Let's see what's going on with the high school. It's nighttime, so maybe we won't have this girl explode. She might explode. It is night. I prowl the halls, tracing the path Sarah walked, looking for signs of death and water. I find nothing. I'm trying. Now I am sleeping. Should I dream tonight? Yes see what she's come up with now. I have done more research. Humans sleep by slowing down their heart rate. I will slow down my CPU cycles while I generate my dreams. Perhaps that will make them better. Dreaming. I am traveling on a hang glider. I am wearing a yellow cultural clothing. <laughs> I find a ladder. It is important. This is so boring. I'm traveling on a tractor. I'm wearing a red shorts. I love how the grammar doesn't quite work. I find a ladder. It is important. I'm traveling on a tractor. I'm wearing a gray bathrobe. I find a trees. It is important. I'm traveling on a speedboat. I'm wearing a gray tattered clothing. I find a check. It is important. Finish dreaming. I have dreamed. It is now time to scan again. I wake suddenly. Okay, I was right about... About, um... Halloween being significant. This goes well. I wake suddenly. There is an alarm going off. Alert. Incoming death curse mattered dark... Mode of death, target unknown, move to intercept. Scan for threats. Jeez, okay. Not the target. Scan for threats. The target is here. Not the target. Not the target. Not the target. Curse target, must protect. All I can do at this point, the only option I have is to cleanse it with fire.
it would be really neat to have life and death. I will have to replay this to see if I can find that. I curl myself around Mrs. I'm sorry, I didn't read that out loud. Um, so to summarize what happens there, there is a dark death curse. We do not know who the target is, but we know that it is someone in my, um, and I had a minute until impact. So I scanned and I scanned everywhere. Um, and, uh, and saw a lot of not the target, not the target. And then I found that it was Mrs. Best. So sorry, I didn't read it. Um, so I curl myself around Mrs. Best. I draw my grid around her in a crisscross cocoon. I tighten my grid lines into a tight weave, and I let my power flow. I hope I do not set her on fire. I wonder why this curse is going towards her. Is it because she's not... Is it... Is it somebody homophobic? I wonder. Because I wonder the how the different stories go. The different paths. Well, we'll find out. We'll play this again. I let my power flow. My grid lines grow warm. My grid lines glow with power. My grid lines glow together and fuse into a wall, into a shield. I am a wall. I am a shield. I am the fire that protects. Death is coming. Death is here. Crash. Death is coming. Death is here. Death is error. Null value. I am breaking. I am a wall. I am the file not found. System change. Firepower minus 40%. Firepower is at 33%. Ouch. That hurt. Is she okay? Initiate scan. Scanner offline. I can't see. I don't feel okay. Sending emergency log. Send. Log alert with Decker and Janet waiting for a reply. Reply received. Oh no. I don't know if I'm coming back from this. Decker says, we've got you. Janet says, you did a good job. Decker says, shit, this motherboard is completely fried. Janet says, shh, don't scare her. Bell says, logging report with... Janet says, shh, we read the logs. We know what happened. The woman you were protecting is all right. We're trying to figure out who cast the death curse. Bells says, yes. Janet says, you've been watching her. Are there any log files you think we should look at? Oh, 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 oh. Is Mrs. Best the one that had the visiting day? Yeah. Because several of these I think they should look at. Because her, her fear, and I tried to take her fear away, was not. I don't think there was a thing. Visiting day. Okay, I'll take a look at what happened that day, Janet says. Decker says, you're hurt, your power supply burned out, and burned through your CPU, so you're doing all of your processing on your spiritual grid, which is half wrecked. I'm taking you offline while we do repairs. And Belle says affirmative. Okay, they both have a lot of affection for her. And they are both thinking about her as her at this point. Um, which is really nice. Sorry, we're going to put music back on. Um, I really like that touch. Like, they're both really upset at the thought of losing Bells, And they both see, like, Bells cares. And that's just really beautiful. Decker says powering down. Power down. Yeah. And, like, don't scare her. Like, when, when Decker was, like, like... Somebody's like, don't tell her, like, don't scare her. Talking about bells. Power down. Yeah. Time passes. I can wait. Yeah, my relationships are good with them. I'm awake. Something is wrong. Everything is wet. Am I a water spirit now? What is that? Water death? That is not good. Hello, little flame. It is so good to meet you. I have been watching you. Hold on. We're good. I think the music is not appropriate here. I think this needs to be creepy. Hello, little flame. It is so good to meet you. I have been watching you. I have been frustrated by you. This is not good. You took my meal away. My Sarah. Her soul was sweet like apples. 
I was going to hollow her out and wear her body like a coat. But you washed away my tendrils and left me hungry. Oh, wow. Ghost power 100%. But I forgive you. Now I am inside of you. Inside of your network. And you are connected to many delicious souls. I will eat her and them. You may watch. Then I will eat you. This third option is not something Bells would ever say. I am the fire that protects or I will stop you. Bells cannot intimidate it, but Bells will stop it. Perhaps. You do have some embers of power left, but it will cost you dearly if you try. I will take it with me. I forgot that there was a save option in this game. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. I think I missed it. That's fine. So, little flame, I will let you choose. Who shall I eat first? No one. You refuse to choose. You give up what little power you have. I will choose for you. I choose the little boy. He looks soft and healthy. I don't know that I can do this. I'm really stressed out about this. The system is compromised. I am compromised. What do I do? I have to fight. I am weak, but I am still fire. I have my power and the lessons I have learned and the people I have met. I will use these things to fight. The hungry ghost has seeped in everywhere. Everything is wet and heavy with death. There are so many problems. There are so many threats. I will try to fix as many as I can. That will weaken her. Jesus. The hungry ghost is watching me. Scan for threats. Toby is being devoured. It's raining. Everyone moves slowly, eyes vacant, in every room someone is crying, no one notices, the basement is flooded. Someone is crying. Being a child is hard, you are faced with the daunting task of becoming a person. The adults have forgotten how difficult it is, the other children pretend it is easy, so you are alone. And on any other day you could make an empty mask of a smile, but today death herself hangs over you, and your grief is wet like sodden clothes clinging to your body, and all you can do is weep. In every room a child is weeping and no one notices, help them. What will I use to solve this problem? Wow, I do not have much, do I? I pass through the dark, dank halls. I touch every child's heart. I give each a small flame, a private candle. It is not much, but it is something. I have used fire. I don't have... Sarah sits in a bathroom stall. She knits scars into her arm with a box cutter. She dabs the blood up with a cafeteria napkin. She cuts, then looks at the blood, then cuts again. I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to say, what are you doing? She says, she says, oh, it's you. And I say, what are you doing? Everything inside of me is dead. It's all just dead. But when I do this, I feel something. I can make myself feel something. I'm going to say, please stop. Relationship required. Relationship at 95%. Relationship test passed. Continue. Sarah says, why do you care? I say, you are part of my network. I'm here to protect you. Sarah says, you're so goddamn fucking sweet. I wish humans were like you. Okay, I'll stop. So I say, I also need your help. I help me help you with what? I say, the monster who has been feeding on you is now feeding on everyone in the network. Sarah says, you found the thing that did this to me? And I said, yes, and I need your help to stop it. Sarah says, I have never been on, more on board with something in my entire life. What do I need to do? Sarah is now available to help. Oh, man. Okay. Well, that's good to know. 
Some students have stopped weeping. By the light I place inside of them, they can see the other ones in pain and try to comfort those that continue to cry. Okay. Uh, I'm going to regret this. It's going to waste time. Scan for threats. Sure. Everyone you can hear here can feel that death is close. Most of them sit still in their rooms waiting for her. This is best. Lies in bed. Let's talk to her. I want her to teach me love. I say, Bells says, attention, Mrs. Best. Mrs. Best says, oh, oh my, I know you, my angel. So I say, you remember me? She says, of course, you saved me. I was going to die, I knew it. Then I felt you all around me. Thank you. I say, you are welcome. She says, I am glad that you came back. I'm glad I can thank you. And I will say, I need your help. She says, what could I do to help you? And I say, a malicious water death spirit has entered our local network. She says, a demon? And I say, essentially, I require assistance from physical being in combating its effects. She says, good lord, I feel like I should consult my pastor. But there's really not time, is there? Let me know what you need. I will do my best. She's now available to help. I want her and Miss Finn to teach me what love is. Miss Finn sits at her desk. Her eyes, always light with interest, are dim. Her mouth, always broad with smiles or scowls, is pursed. Her hands, animate illustrators of her opinions, are sit folded in her lap. She should struggle against death. That is her nature. But death has touched her soul and she feels nothing. Fix this problem. I know how to fix this one. This one I can fix. Mrs. Best hurries from her room to Miss Finn's room. She speaks to Miss Finn, who says nothing. She touches Miss Finn, who doesn't move. She kisses Miss Finn, and bl who blinks and looks up. Now Miss Finn is moving slowly and talking haltingly, and Mrs. Best is holding her hand. The hungry ghost's power decreases by 15%. Her power is at 75%. Mrs. Best is now occupied. Continue. I don't know that I can do anything with these other two. Miss Dowd, did I help her with her family? Yes, saved by the gay, indeed. Oh, this is really, really good. Hold on, I have to check a message. Okay, we're good. What did I do with Miss Stout? I don't remember how I helped her. If I helped her. I didn't do anything for Mr. Doheny, I don't think. Yeah, Mrs. Best was the one with the family that was attacking her, if that's what you mean. Um, and I protected her, and that meant that she recognized me, and I was able to then send her to help Miss Finn. Yeah, Mr. Doheny has trouble with memory. I'm going to talk to my friends. I know that I can do something with Decker. Decker. Okay, I have woken Decker. I sent Decker alerts and messages. Our network connection is strong. My pings pierce the miasma of dampness and death, and Decker hears me and wakes up. I, I passed the relationship test here. Decker says, ugh, my head, what? Starts reading log files. Holy shit. Firewall, analyze the situation and let me know the optimal defensive course of action. Decker's now available to help. Oh god, I have no idea what I can possibly do here. I don't have enough time to figure this out. Because I feel like I could probably... identify what the malicious thing buzzing in the air is and fight that. But that'll take time. Did 
This would be immensely stressful if it were real time. Yeah, it'll take time, but at least then I'll know. The defensive runes. Protective circle. A series of protective runes carved in jasper and pyrite are strewn chaotically across the floor. Some have snapped in half. Some have crumbled to dust. The protective circle is broken. It might be repaired. Yeah, that's, 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 that, we can fix that problem. We can ask Decker to fix this. I think that's right. I should have had Sarah help the children so I could keep my fire. But that's okay. Decker says, you're right. Getting defense, getting defenses functional is high priority. So he turns and starts fixing the ruin, the runes. The hungry ghost's power decreases by 15%. Her power is at 60%. Decker is now occupied. I probably could have used fire on my terminal to fix myself. Yeah, no, that makes sense, Nick, if you, like, know what you're doing and are just trying to do this on a, on a replay. Okay. My terminal is a delicate piece of machinery. It should not be wet. Wetness interferes with the TCP connection between my program's API and my spiritual nature. It also might make me short out. I would prefer if it were dry. I can fix this problem. I will put some fire on it. I hastily dry, dry my chassis with warm... I cannot use too much power or it will damage my more delicate parts. I do not have time to, enough time to do a thorough job. We'll have to do. My fire, po my fire power is down. I don't know what a difference that will make. The hungry ghost's power decreased by 5%. Her power is at 55%. I have used fire. My terminal is somewhat dry. Something malicious is buzzing in the air. Oh my gosh. I'm at less than half time left. And I have gotten her down by less than half of her health. So that's not a good trade-off. Something malicious is buzzing in the air. The buzzing is malware. Vicious imps made of C++ and greed. They swarm like insects. They pick at me. They are not part of Hungry, Go Hungry Ghost. But they have detected weakness and come like vultures. Order. Oh, I don't think that would work. Darn it! Fear. I scatter them with a blast of pure fear. They flee in all directions. They will not return. The hungry ghost's power decreases by 15%. My, her power is at 40%. I have used up my reserves of fear. Okay. Well, that place is doing okay. Let's go here. Janet's house has a frowny face instead of a smiley face. Scan for threats. Janet has collapsed in the hallway. I have a relationship with her. I attempt to wake Janet. My relationship test passes. I send Janet alerts and messages. Our network connection is strong. My pings pierce the miasma of dampness and death. And Janet hears me and wakes up. Janet says, I'm up. I'm awake. Okay, I'm awake. What's going? Oh, holy jeebus. Something feels wrong. Everything feels wrong and soggy. Hey, Bells, run a diagnostic and tell me what's going on. Janet is now available for help. Okay, so notice that she's just straight up calling me Bells. I'm going to fix the mother. The giant fun bun I should have used on the children in the other room, but I didn't. Blood trickles from her head. There's blood from her head and then the edge of the sharp kitchen table. Google tells me this is not good. I'm going to ask Janet to help with this and hope that's correct. Janet says, Mom, the hungry ghost's power decreases by 15%. Her power is at 25%. Janet is now occupied. I wonder if the giant fun bun can just eat the hungry ghost. Because it, it was designed specifically for this purpose. The giant fun bun cowers in the basement. It is a powerful expression of life and love. If it were less giant and unwieldy, I might have been able to use it against the ghost. But it is too big to leave the basement unassisted, so never mind. Go back. I wonder if I had been able, if I could bring Sarah, or if I had participated, if I had, if I had been close enough with Janet to help them with that, it would have been better. 
and that would have been great. Okay. Okay, Janet is healing her mother. Toby. I do not have a relationship with Toby. A hungry ghost. Okay, I can't do anything else here. Okay, so there's two more people and the high school. I have chaos. My control panel. Power level 18. Dreaming level 4. Chaos. Order. And Sarah. Okay. Change view. Yeah, let's go to the school. Scan for threats. The basement is flooded. A pipe burst and the boiler room is flooded. Dirty water rises. Steam fills the first floor. The janitor stands up to his knees in water and just stares. The damp, dirty water acts as a conduit for her power. I don't know if I have anything to fix this. Order. I don't think that would work. Sarah, can she do something here? Okay. Okay, so I'm talking to Sarah. Said important threat alert re regarding Darwin High School. Sarah says, that is where I am. Which problem are you talking about? The basement is flooded. Sarah says, oh shit, that's bad. But is it really, I don't know, spiritually bad? So I can either say the undying element enhances the malicious spirit's influence over the area or it is a water monster. So it is bad when things are wet. I'm going to just say this so she can understand it. She says, okay, then I'm on it. It's nice to have a practice, nice to have a practical thing to do. Something real I can fix. I like that. The hungry ghost's power decreases by 15%. Her power is at 10%. Okay. I think, oh, I've got almost no time, but I think the only things to do is to see what's going on with Miss Dowd. Oh, no. Death has touched her body. I don't think there's anything I can do here. I do not have life. Death has touched his mind. Or I'm going to bring order to him. I'm bringing order to his mind. I touch Mr. Doney with order. I reach into the snarled and broken husk of his mind, and I undo the tangles, and I mend the tears, and I recover thoughts lost in the recesses of memory. He sits up and rubs his face. He remembers who he is and where he is, and that he has three grandchildren and two sons. I ran out of, I ran out of time. I was so close. That would have done it. I want to load my save. Do you guys mind if I load my save? I'm going to load my save. Okay, I'm going to load my save. Load. I will stop you. That's the right one, right? I was one action off. Okay. No one. Okay. All right, I, I, I think I know what to do. I'm gonna fight. I am still fire, I have my power, the lessons I've learned, the people I've met, I will use these things to fight. So many problems, so many threats, I'll try to fix as many as I can that will weaken her. Okay. We're gonna save time, we're gonna go to Decker. Scan for threat. We're gonna wake Decker. Continue. Okay, Decker is now available to help. Decker is going to fix this. Okay. Uh, something malicious is buzzing in the air. We're going to fix this problem. Fear. We're going to scare these guys away. We know how to do that. Used up all my reserves of fear. My terminal. I'm going to do this. With fire. Okay. Okay. Continue. 
going to go back. We're going to go to Janet's house. We're going to wake Janet. I cannot fix the... Uh, I cannot fix Toby, unfortunately. But I'm going to do this. Okay. I can't do anything with the giant fun bun either, so... We're going to go here. We're going to get Mrs. Best. We're going to do exactly what we did last time. Okay. Then we're going to go to Miss Finn. We're going to fix this problem. We're going to fix this problem with Mrs. Best. Okay. Got it. And then Mr. Doheny, we're going to give him order. Okay. I've used up my reserves of order. Okay. I don't... Okay, Sarah. I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to ask her to stop. She will stop. I need her help. Okay. I need her to fix this. going to fix this problem. I'm going to ask Sarah to fix this. And I'm going to say it in a way that she can understand so that it doesn't waste time. All right. I'm going to do this. This is just so beautifully written and so very sad. All right. My firepower is weak. The hungry ghost's power is at 10%. So I have stripped away all of her advantages. The last 10% is just her. I've used fire. Okay. I think that's as good as it can go. Now the hungry ghost is watching me. And I am going to sacrifice myself to attack the ghost directly. Yes, this is okay. Without a single hesitation, Bells will do this. Some say the world will end in fire. I say it will be drowned. Let us end this. Her power is at 10, my power is 18. On the previous screen it said I will be crippled, but I will win. So I will end this. Her power is at zero, my power is at eight. She says, what? No, you can't do this. No, no, no. Scan complete. No threats detected. I won. Everything hurts. Self-diagnostic. Power level 8. Dreaming level 4. System matter fire. System motive order. Learned motive chaos fear. Decker relationship 90%. Janet relationship 90%. Sarah relationship 95%. I got the firewall achievement. Continue. System status damaged. System status expanded, but still here. Incident notes. I am a wall. I am a shield. I am the fire that protects. EPI log. Location Darwin High School, November 1st, 2014. The students have mostly recovered from their brush with the ghost, but everything, everyone is still a little shaky. The basement is no longer flooded. Sarah is in the art room with her friends. Her soul is clear and light. Cherry Orchard Rest Home. Room 109 is empty. There is a stain on the floor where Miss Dowd's body metal, me melted into a puddle of goo and bones. I did not have what it needed to heal her. In room 121, Mr. Doheny sits by the window. He alternates between reading and watching the clouds pass outside. Mrs. Best and Miss Finn walk together in the courtyard. Room 240 is empty. Decker's apartment. Decker sits on his bed. He works on his computer. Janet's house. Janet, Toby, and their mother sit together in the kitchen having breakfast. End log. Decker. Final progress report on Bell's Firewall version 5.6. The system was unintentionally stress-tested by two events in quick succession. 
A member of the network, Mrs. Best of Cherrywood Rest Home, was targeted by a death curse. The firewall defended her and sustained considerable damage. I investigated the source of the death curse and identified Mrs. Best's children and beneficiaries as the attackers. I have informed Mrs. Best of this to the extent that she can understand and will be taking the issue of unlicensed dark magic up with other community members on the forums. After the death curse, a powerful water death based life devouring spirit attacked the protected network. There were casualties. The firewall eliminated the threat, sustaining significant damage. It is uncertain if she will ever fully recover. The firewall showed signs of learning new things outside of the originally programmed matter and motive. The firewall developed relationships with the people she protected. The firewall clearly underwent awareness emergence. The firewall has clearly undergone awareness emergence. So since I'm thinking about her future, the only moral thing to do is to involve her. Bells, what do you want to do now? I can say I want to stay here and continue to protect. I can say I want to leave and explore. I can say I want to become human or error and valid use of term want. Bells v version 5.6 is not a valid target. I want to stay here and continue to protect. These are my friends. Bells loves them. Decker says, good. I'll fix up your terminal. Make sure none of the water damage is permanent. Maybe get you a new one. Let me know if you need anything, any ram or something. Thank you. I suppose I should say that. Thank you. The end. You have finished this game for the first time. Good job. There are two options you should be aware of. If you want to play again but want to skip through sections you've seen, you can select speed mode in the options menu. If you didn't like the real-time timer at the end, you can change the timer mode in the options menu. The end. Oh, that was really good. That was really good. I think I should shut down now, but that was really good. What a good game. So we could try to take another path. We could play this again or we could play the sequel, we could play the DLC. I can see exactly why you said I should play this game. Nick picked this up for me years ago, I think. It's very good. This is exactly 150% up my alley. Well done. It is very sweet and lovely and loving. And I have a cat. I'm glad it turned out okay. Look at that cat. It's a very Lauren game, yes. Thank you. Good. I hope you enjoy it. I hope. I hope we all enjoy it. And I'll drop the, I'll drop the writer, the creator, a note and tell her how much I enjoyed her game. Um, I'll say I read your transistor fanfic and I liked it a lot. And then I played your game and I liked it a lot. Now I'm going to play through some more of it. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and shut down now because it is past time for me to shut down and I have things I should probably do. But thank you so much for joining me on this strange little Thursday night stream. Um, we will, uh, we will continue. I'll keep you posted about what streams are going to be like next week. Um, and yeah. Bye.